Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Adonai, Adonai, ancient king of Israel, Adonai, Adonai, there is no king just like Zion's king incense rise harps resound Adonai Adonai One of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. We want to explore the power that is in prayer. Teach us to pray. Father, we pray like the disciples prayed teach us to pray we know there is power in prayer but I pray that you help us understand the ordinances and the patterns of the ministry of effectual prayer the prayer that works the prayer that produces may we oh God by this series be a people who can command power in the place of prayer tonight oh god i pray that the grace be supplied in the name of jesus christ please be seated if you can let's be very sensitive teach us to pray part two is anyone under the anointing close to you whether inside outside just guide them so that i believe tonight that 
God is going to be depositing that grace for effectual prayer. The, the prayer ministry of many believers is full of activities, religion, and emotion, but with very little power. And so God wants to grant us grace to be able to be men and women who can pray effectually. Are we together? Psalm 65 verse 2, O thou that hearest prayer, it says, to thee shall all flesh come. So there is a God that can answer prayer. Idols cannot answer prayer. The Bible records that when the angel of death struck the nation, please let's settle down. When the angel of death struck the firstborn sons in Egypt, that Ramesses carried his son and dropped that son to an idol and began to call upon that idol. And he learned once again that idols are only the works of the hands of men. But the Bible says, O thou that hearest prayer, whoever can hear is alive. And whoever can hear can also answer. Hallelujah. Please make sure you get last week's teaching. We may not have the time to go into it again. But just maybe one or two things to just tie it up. I started last week by challenging us that the Bible calls believers many things. The Bible calls us joint heirs. The Bible calls us light. The Bible calls us salt. It's important that the believer not only know who he, uh, who he is in Christ, but the, the various names that represent your dimensions. The Bible calls us ambassadors. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, the Bible calls us kings and priests. That means there is the priestly ministry of the believer. Are we together? It is not a ministry to men of God. It is not a ministry to serious Christians. It is a ministry to everyone who has come under the Lordship of the Christ. And that the major assignment of the priestly ministry is offering that incense. The incense of prayer. The prayer ministry of the saints is the priestly ministry of the saints. Any believer that does not pray is neglecting his or her priestly ministry. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 13 that his house would be called a house of prayer. So not only are believers people of prayer, even the house of God is mandated to be called the house of prayer. We took our time to explain last week why believers should pray. I think that's where we stopped. Um, please listen again and again for the various reasons why the Bible mandates that believers pray. Hallelujah. Part 2 here, we'll just go straight to Matthew chapter 6. Please turn with me. We're studying scripture now. Matthew chapter 6. If you do not love the word of God, your spiritual life is under attack. I repeat, if you do not love the word of God, your spiritual life is under attack. Praise the Lord. A car that hits fuel will not move. Is that correct? Yes. Fish that hits water will die. The Bible says man shall not live. So this is not just the issue of prosperity or success. This is about living. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. So if that word that proceeds from the mouth of God, captured in scripture, um, does not attract your spirit, is a sign that you are dying. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, this is the teaching ministry of Jesus. And let me say it again, that one of the major ways that Jesus built the disciples was through the ministry of the teaching of the word. And he set for us a template. That means believers are built primarily by the teaching of the word. Are we together? Not just to preach. Understand the difference between preaching and teaching. Preaching means to declare, to bring you into an awareness of a reality. To teach means to explain, to show you the operation, the dynamics of that spiritual reality. 
So I can tell you in God's economy, there is favor. That's preaching. When I now open it and begin to show you, if I say in the economy of God, there is salvation, that's preaching. But now when I begin to teach you, I show you the methodologies and then I show you how to activate it. Believers are primarily built. Please listen carefully. Believers are not just built by reading. Please listen. Believers are not just built by praying. Believers are built when the word of God that contains many things, the promises of God, the ways of God, the systems, the modus operandi of God is taught accurately. Listening to it and understanding it will now supply the grace to walk in the truths therein. Are we together? The protocol for really receiving the power of God is that you must get the light that necessitates that power. The power of God comes in your life to defend and to validate. Never forget this. The purpose of the power of God in your life um, is to defend. Defend something you believe and then to validate it in your life and in the life of others. That means if there is no light, there is no need for the power of God to come in defense. Every time Jesus made a statement, the power of God was released to back that statement and to validate that what he said was true. So to just begin to randomly search for power without a passion for knowing the ways of God is what will delve people into witchcraft. Are we together? Will delve people into all kinds of error. Remember that the first thing they did was that the wine was first water before it became wine. Are we together? It was first water in the jar. Then from water, it started changing to wine. If your own starts wine directly, it's not God that is doing that miracle. If it's that miracle, it will start from the word of God. That water, then it will now be turned to wine. Praise the Lord. So believers must be taught the teaching ministry, you see, it is because of this that theologically speaking, there is still argument in the body of Christ whether the fivefold ministry should be called fivefold or fourfold. Because the teaching ministry, um, it is true that, that there is the office of a teacher, as it were, but then teaching is not so much an office, it is the authorized methodology for communicating spiritual truth. So it doesn't matter whether you are operating in the apostolic, in the prophetic, pastoral, evangelistic. In any case, you will need the teaching ministry. Are we together? Yes. When there are no teaching priests, that congregation and that territory is already in trouble. A teaching priest, not just a praying priest, a teaching priest praise God so Matthew chapter 6 Jesus is teaching now and we began to explore some things last week remember we spoke about um, certain foundational mindsets that we must have when approaching the prayer ministry number one he dealt with the issue of hypocrisy verse 5 number two he also spoke about the issue of entering into your closet I took our time to explain that and then he said to not use vain repetition. I explained that very thoroughly. Um, we're going to go to the prayer proper now and then to explore it. Praise the Lord. Are we still together? Right, so um, the prayer starts from verse 9. Matthew chapter 6, please, from verse 9. Look up. Jesus is about to teach now on prayer and he said, after this manner. Now, notice that Jesus never said by this recitation the idea was not the recitation the idea was not the chanting the idea was that i am putting for you a system a manner an approach are we together that when you want to approach remember what necessitated this lecture was their lack of results it was very clear that their prayer was not producing results it was not prayerlessness it was lack of effectual prayer that necessitated this lecture. The disciples were already praying, 
This is not about lack of prayer. This is about prayer that produces results. They were already praying and they noticed that Jesus prayed in a certain way and got results. And every time they prayed, they didn't have results and they said, look, let's stop shadow boxing. Teach us to pray even as John taught his disciples. So effectual prayer must be taught. You don't just pray. You are taught how to pray. Are we together? We'll run it down and then I will take it one by one. Verse 9. Let's read together. One to read. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Uh -huh. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus is teaching now. So let's look at what Jesus was saying. After this manner. That means use this approach. Not use these words. Use this approach. Are we together? So Jesus is telling us that something about this prayer construction. Please go back to verse 9. Holds the key to getting results in prayer. Are you ready? Number one. Our Father. It says when you begin to pray. Pray in this manner. Our Father father everybody say our father jesus is teaching here that the kind of prayer that produces results must first start with an understanding of who you are praying to are we together now the word father is the word abba a double b a it means source it means sustainer it means preserver he is not saying call on God. He is saying have a revelation of the fatherhood of God as you approach prayer. There are certain informations about fatherhood that will sponsor your faith and your confidence while praying. Are we together? Jesus said a number of things about fathers. Number one, Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. The Bible tells us that as believers we have been given the right and the access to cry abba father media please walk with me romans 8 15 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear notice now notice that the moment you are introducing fatherhood two spirits must exit one bondage two fear so that when you approach the prayer ministry that produces result if it is the fatherhood of god then it cannot coexist with fear and a sense of bondage are you following me now he says that he has given us the spirit of adoption and by that spirit we cry abba father matthew chapter 7 and verse 11 i want us to hurry up matthew 7 and verse 11 matthew not amos matthew 7 and verse 11 now look at this jesus is teaching here now and he said if you being evil that means enshrined in your nature is evil you are evil but that even in your evil you know how to give good gifts is that true yes terrorists have wives true or false terrorists have children true or false many of them are very responsible fathers is that true jezebel was a very wicked woman but was an outstanding wife the king never complained about Jezebel. She comes and she sees her husband having a, a poor countenance. Because of that, she takes the initiative to punish Elijah for making her husband's mood change. Now, that's a very good wife. Forget that she's a witch. I'm not talking about her ministry in terms of the demonic operation. I mean her family. Are we together? So I'm just trying to buttress on this. The Bible says men are evil. But that even in our evil, the moment our fatherhood is invoked, there is a sense of compassion. And that we can still leave provision to be good, not to everybody, to our children. So if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts. Everybody say, give good gifts. Not gifts, good gifts. 
that means you have to select no this is not profitable for my child this is not profitable for my child this is profitable good gift means there is a process of carefully selecting it meaning you can trust anything that comes from that father because it was selected it was not randomly picked if you know how to give good gifts to your children then how much more will your heavenly father give good things shout good things that means that Jesus came to correct a perception about the father because until then they did not believe they believed that both good and bad and everything came from the father they credited it the prophets of old although they were used by God they really did not know God I hope you know that so they credited all kinds of things and Jesus came as the image of the invisible God to correct our perception about God and he's saying that God in his character gives good things to them that ask him that means when I ask God for something what do I expect good things notice the Bible never says that he just gives you your desire alone he gives you good things that means you must travel to his realm to interpret good from his standpoint I need to correct this up front because the idea what may be good for you may not be God's idea of good the same way a child will come and slap his father and say give me the car key that is the child's interpretation of good things but the father knows that giving that child that key will end that child's life so it is part of his fatherhood to deny that child and give him something else prayer that works now are we together our father that when you come to God number one you must come to God understanding that he's the source of all things don't come to God as an option <clears throat> The moment you approach God as an option, you are not approaching Abba, Father. It's a mindset. It's not just to say our Father in terms of the linguistic pronunciation that come with this mindset that the man you are approaching is not somebody who was employed by another person to hear you. He is the owner. That means whatever God cannot give me, no man can give me. That is a revelation that should drive me in prayer. Lord, I come to you and I'm asking you for this. If God says no and anybody tells you yes, that person is going to kill you. Because the owner, you come to my kitchen and you see yam, plantain, and you say, give me, I say no. And you ask my security man and the security man says yes. Are you wise to believe that that man will come to my kitchen and it is my house, I employ him. He's now taking my place illegally. That's a thief and a robber. They are the ones who enter through the window. You see that? When you approach God, approach him as touching his goodness. When you approach God, approach him as touching his fatherhood. Understand that his heart of compassion is ever before you. That will take away the sense of bondage and the sense of fear many believers continue to approach God in fear continue to approach God with a sense of bondage and sometimes we men of God in a bid to help people to be serious with God we think that the only way to make people serious with God is to threaten them and to reveal God as an angry God who can strike you the moment he's angry it is true that these dimensions are in God but he has chosen that the dimension that you should approach in prayer is his fatherhood our father we cry our father hallowed be your name hallowed be your name hallowed be your name we cry our father we cry our father hallowed I have seen I've watched a number of children approach their fathers and it's amazing that every father is also something else I hope you know the father is also a manager he's a CEO he's a doctor 
But when the child comes, while we are queuing to see the doctor, the child is coming to see his father. So if you tell the father, the child to join a queue, he says, no, I join the queue if I want to see a doctor. But now I'm coming to see my father and he can just run and come and embrace the father. Watch this, watch this. You can't run and embrace the man like that because he's not your father. You see that? He is the one who will give you injection and prescribe a drug. But the child is coming to his father. Now watch this. It doesn't matter whether he steps on the father's toes. Remember, the father has an eternal commitment towards the child. That does not mean the child will be lawless. But there is a consolation that at his worst, he is still loved by his father. It's a revelation. Listen, believers, let me teach you this. This is the balanced perspective of both grace, revelation, and all of that. There are people who can never approach God properly. Do you know why? Because we have been given a mindset that all God is, is a warrior. Did the Bible not say there is a time for peace? And there is a time, once it is under the earth, God is not always fighting. He fights. Don't make that mistake. He's on a, he's a rider on a white horse, but he's not always on a horse. He can sit on the throne. Jesus was demonstrating the fatherhood of God when, remember these busy protocol guys who wanted to drive the people from seeing him and said, don't interrupt Jesus. He's preparing for a meeting. And Jesus said, no, no, I'm not only a savior, I'm a father. I remember I'm revealing the fatherhood of God. Let the little children, not let strangers, mm -mm, let their children, they are entitled to my attention. Let the little children come to me. He didn't say let the little children prepare and come to me. He said, let them come to me. He said, do not forbid them. The children are acting out something about the father and his children. Rather than driving them, learn. Learn. For for such is the kingdom of heaven. That means you must approach me this way. When we pray, pray in this manner. I am coming to my father. It doesn't matter what dream you said you saw and what God told you about me. It's all right, I've had you. My father. Abba, father. It doesn't matter what you said God revealed to you will happen to me tomorrow because of whatever you think. Thank God for your wonderful vision. But I, have, I know a way of sorting myself. He's Abba, my source, my sustainer, my preserver, my defender. Listen, in this ministry, come. If I see this gentleman outside, even if I'm passing, and he calls me and says, I'm a member of this ministry, he has called on my fatherhood. If I see that he cannot pay his bike, even if he was wrong, I will not draw his ears outside. It will be stupid of a father. This is a, this is a home affair. So I will first correct that thing for my namesake, lest it be told that I mentored him wrongly. It has nothing to do with whether I love him or not. My reputation is at stake. So I will correct it first and say, meet me at home. When he comes home, I'll say, next time, get your bike money before you go. So the awareness that I will correct him, but the awareness that my love overrides everything, gives him confidence that even when he's wrong, he does not run away, he runs towards. Please understand this. Listen, I don't know where we got this jonah type revelation that every time we feel unworthy we run away then when we think we are okay we run towards that's a devilish theology abba father my life changed when the understanding of god as my father He's not only the king of glory. He's not only the maker of the heavens and the earth. You see that? I can call him different things and they are wonderful dimensions. But he says for effective prayer, know this. He is the final bus stop for judgment. The final bus stop for mercy. The final bus stop for everything. Abba, Father. When you pray, say our Father. He's not your father alone. Our, not your father alone. He's the father of all believers too. That means you don't act as if God, 
yes, God has personal covenants with people. But sometimes, you know, especially we men of God, we can make it look as if I have a business with God that I can manipulate God into frustrating you. Abba, God is Father. Fa our Father, not my Father. I go to my God and your God. My Father and your Father. He was first the only begotten son. But when he resurrected, he became the first begotten. He had now brought us many sons into glory. Listen, this is very powerful. Because our approach many times in prayer, we don't know, oh God. Um, well, if you don't hear me, you can go through Joshua Selman. Yes, there are dimensions where you can tap into a man's covenant. We've taught that. But the idea is not to reduce you to feel less. He is our father. You see my precious children here after Koinonia. I am their father. So there's none of their business what you think about them. Sometimes they may not dress well. Sometimes they may not look well. Once I am happy, honestly, what you think makes no, it's none of their business. When you pray, pray in this manner. He didn't say, just say, our father. You can say, our father, not have the mindset. It's not an enchantment. It's a revelation. The person I am approaching is Abba. He's the source of all things. I don't approach God like an option. You see why many believers don't, don't, they have a stone at the back of their house. That stone was anointed and given to them by some kind of devilish covenant. Are we together? They have another idol. I know that most, if you don't have it, just keep quiet. It doesn't mean other people don't have it. It's amazing what Africans bring together. They put that stone, they put all of those things, then they add God to it and pray to everything and wait for whichever answers them. And God says, no, you don't get that about me. Our father. I was not molded. They didn't breathe into me. No. You carry cement that was made by Dangote and make an idol and make it strong using cement and pray to it. You see how stupid we are? And yet God says, no come to me approach me in this way my father hmm. look at Jesus Jesus is standing by the grave of Lazarus and for a few seconds he forgets about the issue of death and resurrection I thank thee my father because you always hear me he said I'm even embarrassed to look like I'm trying to push you I'm only doing it so that they will understand what is going on The love of God is a revelation that the saints must carry. The love and the fatherhood of God. Listen to me. God is not, listen, I will say it again. There are many ways to know God. And one of it is through Jesus. Jesus manifested as the image of the invisible God. His primary ministry before his death and resurrection was to correct our perspective about God. That means whatever we thought God was, we look at Jesus for verification. And we never see one person destroyed in the ministry of Jesus. It was only the religious people that suffered. He only whipped them once and he whipped them out of compassion. The Bible said the zeal of the Lord consumed him, not wickedness. The zeal of the house of God. He said, you are turning my house to a den of robbers and it has necessitated this kind of action. Abba Father. He comes to the woman by the well and he starts a conversation with her. He looks at Zacchaeus. Look at the love of God. Zacchaeus is climbing a tree as a tax collector. Do you know the kind of humility that is? And he says, Zacchaeus, I've changed the crusade. You are worth my going to your house. Only you. Come down. If you were in Jesus' ministry, you would hate him. Because how can you cancel a crusade just to go and see a tax collector? One man. You are on your way going somewhere. And a man climbs up and you see his compassion. And you say, I cancel my program to attend to only you. Oh, Jesus, you are showing favoritism. He said, no, I'm honoring someone here who thinks he's far from me. I want to bring him there. Every time they called upon the fatherhood of God, look at the compassion. Look at the way he approached them. 
take away fear when you approach God. Listen, let me tell you this. He is the one who can forgive you. Running away is still in trouble. And if you are right, he's the one who can bless you. You see that? Everybody say, our father. Sit down, please. Let's continue. We have to rush. So the revelation of God as father is very powerful. The source of all things. The sustainer. And the Bible says, the major characteristics of fathers is that they are givers. It's in the Bible. That means if you are not a giver, you are not a father. Even if you have children. He never said, if you who can give birth. <clears throat> God's idea of fatherhood is not procreation. God's idea of fatherhood is the ability to select and ensure that there is an advantage to the one you are giving to. He measures fatherhood first. Not by the power and the ability to procreate. That means based on God's idea there are many men that have children but are not fathers they do not give a good destiny they do not give a good life a true father is a giver powerful every time i approach him whether i ask him for something or not did you know let me tell you this ministry has taught me a lot of fatherhood every time i see my people sincerely whether our children here or the workers here in the ministry the moment i see them I'm, I'm not even as concerned whether they are crying or they are laughing, whether they've sinned against me or done something wrong. In all honesty, my primary concern when I see them, I want to know they are doing well. By the time I can look at your face and know you have not eaten, I suspend whatever discussion we're having. Have you eaten? Of course, you may not have the courage to say no. And I should have the fatherhood enough to insist. You will not just say, well, uh, I'm not sure. And they say, okay, no problem. It's all right. It looks like you've eaten. You are not a father. You are like a father. You are a hypocrite. You are like a roaring lion. How Satan goes around. But he's not a lion. True fathers are givers. Gentlemen, this is a message for you already. We are doing prayer. So check your fatherhood. It's not by biological maturity. It is by the aptness, the ease to release, the ease to give. The ease to give. You watch children crying in front of bones. You don't even have the fatherhood to say, let me just drop 100 naira. You just laugh and say, yeah, boy, you like it? Boy said, yes, sir. And, and it will be like a joke till you leave that child and go. You are not Abba. No, you are not a father. You are a grown-up adult, but you are not a father. Is God helping us? So he's saying even evil fathers are givers. So whether you are a good father or you are an evil father, at least be a giver. Powerful. You know I have met God by something that is in my hand while I leave him. Whether I go there to intercede, whether I go there to make requests, the fatherhood of God will not allow me to go out of his presence empty-handed. Nobody comes to my house and leaves empty-handed. It's true. Why will somebody come to my house and leave empty-handed? No. I will insist there must be a signature that is my house you came to. My house is not a graveyard. You come to my house, you should live with something. You claim to have been meeting God, but you are living with your hands empty. Abba, the giver. Abba, the giver of good things good things i approach god and i said lord this is my year of extraordinary fruitfulness and i approach him with the understanding that if god the father gave freely his son jesus what else will he not give me are we together number two thank you so he says our father number two who art in heaven <laughs> matthew chapter 6 open our eyes oh god see i truly pray for you from the depth of my heart that the spirit of revelation in a mighty way will come upon your life you see let me tell you how to know the spirit of revelation is upon you it is not in the scarceness of the information you are producing but the ability to draw the mysteries of the kingdom out of stories the ability to draw the methodologies of god out of anything 
you know the spirit of revelation is upon you when the ways of God can come out of any scripture not just the ones you know any scripture he shows you his ways he shows you Christ revealed through any scripture who art in heaven let's discuss now look up please it's a very powerful prayer he's saying when you approach God number one approach him based on his fatherhood have we gotten that then number two he says who art in heaven that means that who is in a realm that is not here listen carefully he is here by his spirit but bodily speaking if I use that word he's domiciled in a realm that is not earth that immediately means approach God through faith your faith will have to come alive because he's not seen in this realm are we together and that anything you cannot see you do not need faith for again Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 6 our father who art in heaven who art in a realm that is not earthly who art in a dimension that may not be easily seen with my optical eyes but you are real I must approach you with that understanding Hebrews chapter 6 please and verse 6 he says where's that 11 sorry Hebrews 11 verse 6 I meant to say sorry 11 and verse 6 watch this he says but without faith it is impossible to please him God for he that cometh to God so he's still talking about prayer must believe that he is meaning he exists I cannot see him but I know he's real and then his father because he also gives and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him my father who art in heaven I believe you although I cannot see you so that I don't feel stupid for praying you are standing alone and you believe you are not alone you need faith to believe that you are writing your prayer request and coming and throwing it before an altar from a sociologist standpoint he knows you are not fine while you are writing oh god be watching i'm writing i drop it before you and you are happy he's seen it doesn't make sense until you engage through faith what is faith conviction about the reality of god and the integrity of his person and the action that you take based on that conviction it's called faith are we together that the foundation of true faith is your conviction the bible says you must believe he is not everybody i believe will have the privilege and the opportunity to have visionary experiences to see god glorified are we together you do not need to see god either in the spirit or in a vision to believe him no he made faith available hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen he said for by it that faith is a connector so i know if i tell you come my dear if i tell you i want to give you one thousand naira if you say where is it you are not operating by faith you cannot see the money but you have to trust that i'm not lying to you are we together and the bible says this scripture was inspired by the holy ghost the one who searches the mind of the father to ensure that everything revealed is truth so when god says he's going to lift you you don't say where is it where is the house show me oh god and i will believe you have become like thomas he said until i put my hand there he said thomas you have robbed yourself of the excellency of faith now since this is what you want go he said blessed is he there is a level of empowerment that come when you have not seen and yet believe believers are people who must learn to trust God even when they don't see him I have a thousand naira to give you well um, I don't I don't know if there is that money but I believe you the first question is you will have to look at me to find out whether I can afford a thousand naira you see that and then number two if I can afford a thousand naira whether or not I am a giver enough to give you if you believe me and I lie to you then it means I don't have integrity but at least you did the believing 
Listen, if you do not believe God, how are you going to pray for the sick? You're going to stand before someone on a wheelchair and he tells you there are angels there that there's a bomb in Gilead. No hospital gave you that bomb. You will stand in front of everybody and say, Sam, you are going to stand up from this wheelchair because God said so. You don't have to hear a voice like prophecy says, tell him to stand up. No. The most powerful state of the believer is when you act without seeing, without hearing, but believing. Not just when you are seeing, not just when you are hearing. The man who has seen, if, I, if God opens my eyes and I'm seeing an angel now, with respect to that sight, I'm not standing by faith again. I'm seeing, he's there, I know. My conviction is tied to God, but strengthened by the presence of that angel. But I do not see, but I believe that the word of God says, are we together, that there are angels. Please listen. And so with that one now, as I minister to this person, this is faith. I can now tell Sam, stand up from that wheelchair. Now, I'm telling him to stand up. Remember that there is nothing physical. Everything there is physical. But the Bible is saying that all that we see is not all that there is. That there is a lot happening in the realm of the spirit. And it says that the person who is doing it is not in this realm. He has operations happening in this realm. But heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. So you have to believe. Many believers are scientific. Let me tell you this. If you cannot believe God for things unseen, you will never go far in life. There is no guarantee anywhere. Apostle, now that I came to Zaria, I thought God said I should come to Zaria. Even if you don't hear any voice, if you are convicted by the truth of scripture, that that location is a place that lifts you, you will stay here, God will back you and you will honor you. It's not about dreams and visions. It's about faith on the integrity of God's word. Visions and prophecies are inferior to the truth of scripture. Who art in heaven? Who art not in this realm? When you pray to me, I'm not in heaven. Of course, I'm in heaven seated with Christ, but I mean bodily speaking, I am here. So you can meet me. If I'm stretching my hand, you are seeing it so you can collect. But where you cannot see and yet you still stretch your hand. Lord, I know you are a giver. So I stretch my hands in advance. Faith. And the angels are watching. This is, listen. This is what surprises the angels because the angels don't walk by faith. Are you seeing that? So when they see believers in the earth who do not have the advantage of those openings and yet they trust God. Imagine how the angels felt when these guys entered the fire. They said, you believe God that far? Fire is about to roast you. And he said, no, I know whom I have believed. Listen, our faithless generation is why God cannot use mighty people. Someone wants to start a ministry and is waiting for an uncle who will vow to be the sponsor. Um, I, will, I will give you, I will give you two million to wax your album. In the economy of God, you will die and not move forward. There are times you have to stand. The signs don't go before. They follow. You believe first. That's why the Bible says when Jesus comes to the earth, we live find faith faith who art in heaven the fact that he's in heaven does not mean he's dead so when you approach him not only is he a giver he resides in a realm that is not optical he resides in a realm that cannot be felt easily with your sensory perceptions that means he's giving you an added information because the devil is the master of the sense realm so when you begin to pray, he says, are you feeling like God is moving? He says, I'm feeling dry. God never told you to believe he's answering prayer because you are feeling anything. Uh -uh. This is the confidence that we have. This is scripture. I'm teaching you. All these feelings have destroyed people. You may be at your most powerful state in the spirit, but because you didn't feel anything, you just say, I don't feel like praying for the sick. If, if that thing comes, I have a way of feeling. You walk that way, the devil will destroy you. The day there is nothing on you, you will feel as if you're on top of the world till your results show nothing is on you. Be careful with feelings. Feelings have destroyed people's lives. 
the word of God must become your new eyes your new sensory perceptions how do I know God is going to lift me I had a dream yesterday no sir no sir my confidence is in the word all other experiences only support they are not the basis why do I think I'll excel in ministry people have been telling me here and there I'm very good you will fail so woefully your basis of confidence in this kingdom is the word of God anything that is not founded on the integrity of scripture you are already at a risk it will not look like it until life destroys you there are many people moving around their destiny with all kinds of dreams and visions dreams and visions are wonderful but no vision and no dream sustains the power to bring itself to life he upholds all things by the word of his power i'm teaching you sound effective prayer strategies not this shadow boxing believers continue to do. That's why there's no result. Our God will touch people here and it's like superstition. And you are waiting. God will move. The power of God will move now. And those stupid things that believers do. No, God is not an idiot. He has taught us a good way of manifesting so that people will know we are birthing the reality of God. God is not a magician. We believe in oil. Nothing wrong with it. We believe in wafers and wine. Are we together? Because these are physical things we see. We believe in water. We believe in handkerchief. Those things are only extensions. It is faith in the Son of God. This simple thing, who art in heaven, is why many ministers cannot rise. That's why they harass people. Oh, Sam, you're a millionaire. Can you wait behind in my office? Pastor Femi, Kenny, promise you are all millionaires. Wait, uh, can God use you? Is that what he told you? Is that what he told you? Did he tell you those are your financiers? Hey, but you see, apostle, the, the, the way ministry, wisdom is profitable. No, 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 no. That's fear who are in heaven so as i approach god you may see me moving around alone and praying outside make no mistakes i'm not alone i may be moving around now there's a mistake that many people make they say why are you moving around and shouting god is an intelligent god sit down see if you are talking to him no 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 just moving around and praying and shouting does not mean god is not hearing you usually those things are licensed for laziness when people find out that they do not have the grace and the energy, they look for intelligent ways to justify their cold and lukewarm prayer life. At about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, not a quiet voice. Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani. Jesus praying to his father with a loud voice. So he, he was not disbelieving his father. He was praying. When you pray loud, it's not unbelief. Jesus himself prayed with a loud voice. It's not every time he went to the grave and said, Father, thank you because you hear me. Uh -uh. There were times that he prayed, even the, his tears were like drops of blood. Yet he was praying to the father. Is God helping us? Who are in heaven? Please sit down. Let's hurry up. We must have part three for this series because in part three I will teach you now the dynamics. These ones we are just observing the rules of engagement so that you don't just carelessly approach prayer and say God why are you not answering me you see the way we pray believers many believers pray and their prayers are full of wise sayings. They just say all kinds of things. Many of those things believers say are not scriptural teach us to pray number three Hallowed be thy name. What does it mean to hallow his name? The word hallowed there talks of reverence. The word hallowed there talks of honor. That means do not be confused. God is father. It is true. But then be careful. Boldness is not pride and dishonor. You must still maintain that fortitude that although he is your father, he is God hallowed be your name hallowed be your name 
I honor your office. I honor your position. I do not take you for granted. It was not by my righteousness and by my qualification that I have access to you. Now that you have given me access, I will not abuse it. Hallowed be your name. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Very powerful scripture. Let's hurry up. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that my house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. Listen, he said, for them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. This is God speaking. So God is saying, just because I am father, there should be a place of preserving honor at the back of your mind. Boldness is not foolishness. Hear what the Bible says. And this is where many believers get it wrong. Please give us Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. We are studying scripture. The Bible says to come before him with boldness. Are we together? Let us therefore come boldly, not arrogantly. Boldness is not arrogance. Boldness is not pride. Boldness is not dishonor. Are we together? Yes. Boldness. I recognize, oh God, that you are my father. You have stooped so low, but I will never take you for granted. You are father, but you are God. Charismatics and Pentecostals have messed up in this area. Just because we have an understanding of the fatherhood of God, you see the way people talk to God and act and you are wondering, you say, you see this, this variety of dishonor, hallowed be your name. Notice that every time you would see once and again, Jesus would remind them, look at how Jesus hallowed the name of his father. I can of myself do nothing. After being so famous and doing great things, no. Jesus paid attention to the father. He always made people know that he was under authority. He continued to project the fatherhood of God. Hallowed be your name. This is a principle that you have to learn. Because you see, let me tell you this. In a true father-son relationship, come my friend, watch this. The proof of genuine love between a father and a son is that when you see two of them, you should not know who is father and who is son. A wise son, now every once and again, has the responsibility to intentionally make men see the difference. Are you seeing that now? This is what Jesus did in his earth work. My earthly father is alive. And I love, please help that lady. Now watch this, please, look up. My earthly father is alive. And honestly... It's possible they are even listening now. My earthly father has profound respect for me. Profound respect for me. My father will not pick his, call and his phone and call me until he sends a text and say, Are you free, sir? My father that gave birth to me. Now, if I'm a stupid son, one day I will look at him and say, um, this, this careless thing that these young people in our generation do, don't know the difference between father and son. Popsy, how are you? You see those, those kinds of indiscipline attitudes? No. no matter what happens, my father remains my father. I can change the future, but I cannot change history. Father. Are we together? There are times that when you see me and God, you think we drink tea together. This guy can just joke and God will honor him. Ah, this man and Holy Spirit, they are joking. Oh dear, you ask him. There are times I know the difference. My knees tell the difference. My clothes on the ground tell the difference. Yes. Everybody who recognized the difference between God as Father and God as God, 
that revelation that hollow is very powerful they commanded dimensions of his attention are we together although jesus being god when he got to heaven he didn't say shift let me sit down he waited until he was coronated the lord said to my lord sit down until then he was standing yet co-equal sit down are we together yes. i remember a few years ago one very foolish boy came around to see me and he said apostle they say you are so nice you are so humble and he was misbehaving i told him i said please walk out of my house humility is not stupidity you don't you are not you are not a wise person go and learn wisdom see no matter how free you become with god no matter how free you become with greatness never forget who you are talking to never forget who you are relating with that's why every once and again when men forget god will do something that will remind them i am god from beginning to the end there's no place for argument I am what God does. Believers need to be told this. Listen, that's why uh, if he loves you, he will not descend on you. He would descend on an enemy in a way and manner that just makes you say, ah, this is the one I'm relating with. And you come back, you say, no, you are still mine. I see it happen even with me. There are times when miracle service is done, people are, or maybe people are on the queue. And the other person is hoping to jump and hug me. And the person before him, as soon as I touch that person, the person is flying up and down. You see the person just, the next person on the queue now behaves and says, good afternoon. I said, no, we were to hug now. What suddenly? Let me teach you something. Every time you humble yourself and reach out to people, discern whether their honor changes. If it drops as they come close, stop there. Never give people access beyond their level of communicating honor. It's dangerous. They will destroy you, destroy your system, destroy everything. My children here can do things for me that many of you cannot do. They can command me to bring my ears. Bring your ears and hear. And I'll just bend quietly. And they will now say, I want puff puff or I want something. I, I would have looked and said, can't you imagine this? Do you know who is standing before you? While you are standing, oh God, finally I'm going to see Apostle. <laughs> she said, bend your ears, Apostle. Go and, I need chinchin or puff puff. I, I just, okay, quietly go and meet the welfare HOD to sort you out. That's Father. But I can guarantee you, as those children grow, one day, if they do something that is not nice, even if it's with two fingers, you can spank them. One, two, I'm still father. Are we together? Notice people who don't spank children a bit when they cry. They get used to it because they know I can cry my way out. One day you tell them, mm, I'm your father, but I'm a leader. The God of heaven. Respect him. Hallow be your name. You know, when you see a man of God moving strongly under the anointing, it looks like he's commanding God. Oh, the power of God will touch this and this one is flying. The power of God will do this. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it looks like this man has pushed God from the throne. Oh God, where are you? This man is the one sitting on the throne based on everything. A wise man, while you are enjoying the wow factor, remember you are moving. It's like you are moving at the edge of a seat. A wise person will quickly just say, um, ladies and gentlemen, I, let me just remind you again that there is one who is mightier than I. The moment you just balance that equation, you frustrate the devil. I was on my way hoping he would continue like that. Now he's acknowledged God. Because in all your ways, when you acknowledge him, he will direct you. That means there is always progress. Let me tell you this. Fame looks sweet. It is very, very powerful to let men know you are the final bus stop of everything. The God of Apostle Joshua Selman, 
the God of Koinonia. You enjoy it when people are sitting there and people are kneeling down. Oh, daddy, you know, those things, those things look powerful until you forget God. God does not punish you. He steps out just like your will wanted and you will see what it means to be without God. Have you seen a dog wanting to get a bone but someone is standing there? He can wait for two hours hoping that guy will move. That's how the devil is. Your immunity is not in any strength of yours. It is in your partnership with God. Never forget that. Hallowed be your name. Number four. Are we making progress? Let's see where we can stop. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is teaching. Pray in this manner. Watch this. That you approach prayer that a believer who wants to approach prayer in a way and manner that he will get answers must be one who the entire scope of his prayer is hinged on seeing the will and the purposes of God coming to pass. Get my teaching for your glory. Please get it. Everyone get it. Write it and you can collect it from the media. It's free after service for your glory. Very powerful teaching. It is one big secret to my life. You know, I told you that the Lord told me years ago that son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Remember, you already know that your father is a giver. So you don't act as if he does not want to give thy kingdom i prioritize what you want it is not just what i want i'm not using you just to get needs i'm here to promote your interest is bigger than what i want find out in scripture those who put themselves under every kind of inconvenience to advance his kingdom to see that his interest was promoted notice their lives he made a wonder out of their lives Esther was not just in the palace to enjoy when she was there she would have remained there they would kill the Jews and eventually kill her but she remembered I'm here to promote something I'm the only woman who has that kind of access to the king I will use my access for his glory eventually Esther is lifted Mordecai is lifted her man dies the Lord changes Christ is glorified Herein lies the destruction that comes with our selfish prayer. This is how an average believer prays. Look up, please. When it's as if we are entering a room, we pray two or five minutes tongues very quickly to just warm the atmosphere. Lord, I thank you. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. As if we are rapping. Uh, you are the rose of Sharon. You are the, if not you, that is lifting me. And the Holy Ghost is watching you. And angels are watching you. They are seeing the selfishness. Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. It's, you are just passing the gates, passing the court, moving around, and then, um, God, well now that I've finished, oh God. You have, it's, it's not the first time I'm saying this thing to you. It's not like you have forgotten, but I'm, I'm, I'm here again. Eh? You think you are praying. No, that's a lamentation. That's not prayer. Jesus is still, remember the disciples tried this thing, this method. It didn't work. That's why they say, teach us to pray. We are tired of wasting our time. See, God is moved by the feelings of your pain. He's touched, but only his word compels action. Just because God is touched does not mean he will move. He does not move by emotions. He moves at the impulse of his word. I have learned in my life the power of putting the kingdom above you, above your needs. Ladies and gentlemen, I show you the way of true power in the kingdom. I show you the way to receive things you did not pray for. It's been my life. You can ask God. I'm telling you sincerely, and it's not because of what God has done in my life today. Less than 25% of my prayer is for me. Ah, apostle, you have food on your table. No, it's not something I started today. It's been there like that. 
this need driven prayer you will see a believer spending six hours praying and at the end of it you say kai you are a prayer warrior ask him what were you doing for the six hours if he tells you he was praying in tongues clap for him because he has done well but most times he will tell you that six hours praise and worship took 10 minutes or so are we together maybe listening to a tape for 25 minutes that you off in anger because it was not saying what you wanted to hear are we together and the remaining part of that prayer is just a pouring out of lust and selfishness lord the other day look at this girl my junior she's now married i'm, I'm saying this, you are the only one i can talk to like yes he's abba but he's not stupid remember we say hello his name is this how many of us pray so don't just say i prayed and things are not working what did you do the disciples said teach us to pray all my younger ones are working god what is this yeah the other day look at the person i taught in primary school i can't believe that it was this guy that did a transfer of ten thousand. now how do you expect god to answer that prayer be god yourself and imagine a prayer warrior called you praying to god mark that script But imagine a believer with so much burden and pain and yet he comes and says, Lord, I know that I have my needs, but I want you to know that your interest is before me and you mean it. You know anything you say, heaven looks at your heart before they mark the script. You can talk grammar with your mouth and they look, they say, this guy is a liar. He's just talking stories. It's just because he's in a prayer group and there are many people. That's not the truth in his heart. Your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign. Above all. Above all. Lord, your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign. Above all. Above all. In my life. In my life, Lord, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. In my life, in my life, Lord, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. me my brothers and my sisters it's a powerful strategy that you approach God Lord I'm praying for koinonia I have needs but I suspend it to pray Lord bring souls Lord change lives people are on their way traveling to come now pray and the devil will be saying keep praying there is God in a hurry does God have opening hours and closing hours what is the rush for It is true faith to leave your need and stand. Let me tell you how to get a rich man's attention. Find where his eyes is looking and go there. If a rich man is thirsty, you get his attention by going where water is to bring water. You don't stand and say, oh God, tend to me. He's busy. That approach is not the best analogy, but I'm telling you this. You want to get God's attention. Look for where his eyes and his heart is. Oh, I'm, lift, I'm lifting people in this ministry. Lord, let me be part of those who pray this into. I'm praying. And the devil is saying, are you aware that your mother is in the hospital? Are you aware that she's about to die? And while you are praying, Lord, I'm praying. Let lives change. Thank you, oh God. They are being saved. I decree and declare. Friday's meeting is another encounter. Lord, as your people sit under this atmosphere, their lives are changing. And while the angels are wondering, this man has an option. This is what Solomon did that touched God. 
he said solomon i give you a free check and solomon said lord forget about my needs i know that you want your people led i am young give me an understanding heart so that i can lead your people and god says you got it the pattern was honored because you did not ask for the life of your enemy or for money and all of this I will give you wisdom and an understanding heart like no other king I said but with it I will give you riches I will give you wealth I will give you honor you remind God about yourself when you forget about yourself selfish driven prayer I'm not saying you don't bring petitions don't get me wrong you can take out time but many of us I can tell the truth sincerely between you and God this whole year I'm not sure you have prayed for any other person aside from yourself it's always me it tells even when you come to stand for your family for prayer what I, I'm not putting you under pressure uh, Apostle, well, forget uh, my mother how is she well her leg has started improving just leave her but this thing now is me when it is all about you, you would not command the attention of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will, your intent be enforced. I show you the secret of very great men. They decrease and his purpose is increased through them. And while that is happening, requests you are not raising, God is answering. Listen. The Shunammite woman forgot about the issue of her barrenness and started paying attention to the prophet. Every time prophet Elisha will be passing and they say, we discern this is a holy man of God. In other words, she's always passing to execute the will of God. I know I'm barren, but forget about my barrenness. Let us find a way and build him a room. Let us put books. Let us put light. And when the prophet came and enjoyed, the prophet by himself, he started telling Gehazi, he said, what can we do for this woman? In other words, it is not consistent with God's character to go all the way and then he forgets about you. You cannot outgive God. So when you forget about yourself, you make God to remember you. And he said, God, don't leave me. He said, he told the woman, listen, the, the woman told the prophet, he said, well, I dwell among, he said, the prophet said, should I talk to the governor for you? He said, I dwell among my own people. And Gehazi just said, sir, this woman is barren. He said, that's it. Imagine if every time she was passing and they put a chariot to stop Elisha and say, you are a prophet. Are you not, can't you see that your neighbor here is barren? The prophet will curse her and say, you better clear, you are, you are an interruption to my assignment. This I have learned about God. My heart is only concerned about what brings him glory. father knows you have need of these things listen let me tell you try this thing and do it with revelation and you will wonder at the hand of God God give me God give me God give me God give me 
God give me and heaven is saying you are not profitable your prayer is not profiting the kingdom at all dissipating energy for hours Lord give me give me power give me bread give me tea give me this give me fame let me outshine and while you are praying that all God is seeing is flesh self so it is not just that you are praying is God's heart a priority in your prayer apostle I'm not an intercessor you see it it's not for intercessors it's a pattern in this manner pray thy kingdom come thy kingdom come thy kingdom come you think God does not know you have needs there are times you can dedicate honestly to pray for yourself read the Bible and find out how many times Jesus prayed for himself read your Bible from Mark chapter 4 when he started praying in the wilderness read it up until the time he went to heaven how many times did he pray look at the prayer of Jesus in John 17 father the hour has come glorify now thy son that thy son will glorify him this is eternal life that they may know thee the one and true God I pray for them not that they will leave but that you will keep them all that you have given me I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition that scripture may be fulfilled that they may know this he is praying for them and it's a shame let me tell you this I, I don't mean I'm not trying to speak bad but if you are a man of God here or you have any kind of spiritual responsibility and you don't cry before God over your congregation over your people you will never have testimonies in that church keep prophesying in the open and don't pray in the secret you will be surprised to see is the reason why many churches have only one two three people testified because the truth is the men of god don't pray for the people the true up the part of the apostolic ministry of paul Ephesians, for this cause i paul i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you not to me thy kingdom come please reorder your life this night reorder your plan this night hear what i'm telling you i show you the way that makes you successful reorder your life lord you have put me a priest as this in this family things are not going well in my family i know that i have needs but for now oh god I'm dedicating these two days and I'm not mentioning anything about myself. It is about my father's salvation. It's about my mother's healing. It's about my sister's barrenness issue. Uh, that is a priesthood ministry. Of course, I know why you are spending three hours. Is it not because you are praying for yourself? When you are praying for others, five minutes is all right. Lord bless them. Just give them what money can buy and what money cannot buy. In Jesus' name. Is that prayer? Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. On Fridays like this, my mind is just thinking koinonia. I'm just thinking. My, my entire, my mood, everything is as if I'm not feeling fine. The few times that I travel and I'm not here on Friday, you ask the people that travel with me. Once it's Friday or Sunday, whenever Koinonia is holding and I'm not around, once it's 5.30 towards 6, it's as if my, my mood just changes. I'm not, I don't, they, they quietly leave me alone. They, they have their way. They, they, everybody just leaves me alone and just leaves me and my God there to just sort ourselves. I can't even lie down to sleep. That's the most painful part. I remember the time I missed miracle service here. They brought me the video and I think it was Benga that was praying or so. When I had it, I said, off that thing, please quickly, take it away from me. I sat down. I felt bad that night. I didn't know. It was as if I was going to die. That's the heart of a shepherd. Some of you would think and say, ah, who knows? Maybe somebody's first foot now was going, they were going to give me, line up and give me first foot after service. And God is saying, look at the kind of shepherd who wants increase. Look at the kind of shepherd who wants extraordinary fruitfulness. You are not thinking whether the people are blessed. You are already thinking this person's first fruit, his salary. 
when God does not bring increase, ask questions. What is the motif behind it? God sees my heart. I've told God many times, if it means me failing so that you will succeed, it's still a good bargain with God. I've prayed and cried to him that much. There is almost nothing in my life, sincerely speaking, that I seek for myself. If I ever seek anything for myself, I can show you how it connects to God and his glory. I want you to check your desires. Check the content of your prayer. Huh? How does your prayer route to birthing the purposes of God? Lord, give me a husband. Give me a wife. No problem. Why? How, what do you mean why? Am I a small child? Are you blind? And God says, you see what we are saying now? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Oh God, give me, come divine. Give me a child. Why? So that you will have a prophet. I've been sensing in the spirit and I read that there are prophets who will move in this season. Lord, I donate my womb. And God says, you are talking to me now. You are talking to me now. I see your pregnancy can now become a ministry if it will birth the purposes of God. See, a ministry is not just standing on the pulpit. It is whatever comes out of you that can birth his purposes. Lord, give me anointing. Why? Why do you want the anointing? I've, I've gone through failure in my life. Oh God, you know my background. And God says, that's not enough reason. Lord, I'm watching people. I saw the other day, this family, they were believers. They became non-believers simply because the power of God could not be demonstrated in that family. Lord, can you make me a bridge between someone's going to hell and his conversion? I donate myself and God says, you are talking to me now. You are ready for real fire from heaven. After this manner, pray. Prayer warriors, hear me. Most people do not pray correctly. They pray voluminously. They pray extensively. But the content of their prayer reduces it from the eyes of God's will. Very small, very small portion of it is kingdom. Let me tell you, if everything God gives you he sees that his kingdom will be represented there. I tell you sincerely, you will get more things without praying. All this job that many of you want. You see, telling God, if you give me a job, I'll give you the first fruit. That's, that's nonsense. That's not, that's not, God is not looking for first fruit. What will you do with the other fruits? God is looking for everything. Not all your money. That's not what I'm saying. Your life, Lord, in this office, you need an ambassador. I'm, I'm available. Lord, as you are searching for ambassadors, I'm available. And God says, are you? Fine. And you will see your CV that you submitted since 2014. Someone will wake up in the night to go and dust it. This I know about God. Align your heart to God's purposes and watch the wonder-working power of answered prayer. God will shake systems and make sure that he comes to you. It is why covenants are powerful because you have now bound yourself. God knows that human beings vacillate. So when they come under covenant, it's an oath. That means they are aware of the consequence and yet they bound themselves. It's a token of seriousness. So God honors it. Hallelujah. Let me touch one more. Let's pray in the spirit one minute. Just one minute. He bala su se bara ashi. Kala baranda gade prati. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done.
Kalabatu sada brada gede balatu si. Ski baraha sodes kalabanda kata pradisi. Let's continue verse 11 verse 11 please let's read together one to read give us this day our daily bread notice the progression now that my life and all about me is for you as a subset of the provisions that will allow me to focus on your kingdom coming it will be difficult for me to focus on the matters of your kingdom, oh God, when certain constraints are there. So on account of my desire and my insistence to see your kingdom come, give me this day my daily bread. Are you seeing it now? You don't demand daily bread in isolation. It is part of the entire program that can allow his kingdom come. Kai, this is powerful. notice that when it comes to God's kingdom he doesn't want to even give you monthly he wants to give you daily remember you are asking for monthly and God is saying I am dispassionate about making you comfortable to serve my purposes I decide to make my benevolence daily so that there is no excuse give us this day not our bread Give us this day according to your ordinance. You say that every 24 hours there is an allocation. What is today's allocation? Give it to me. And God is saying you on legal right, you can place, help those outside. You can place a demand and say, Lord, I am here. Give me this admission because I have made up my mind to do this. Give me this, give me that. Send me prosperity. Open up doors for me. Lord, I'm unable. I have a heart for your people. But I cannot give. The reason why I cannot give is because the means is not there. And God says, I will not even do monthly with you. Let's go daily. I know many people never believe that there is something called daily bread. Notice, not daily flour. Bread is processed flour already. Please understand what I'm teaching you. There are times that God gives you seed. There are times God gives you flour. But there are times because the king's business requires haste. He will make the bread and give you. It's called prepared blessings. So don't be angry when God gives you an intelligence to attract business people and gives another person a house, daily bread. That's bread already. A house that is built. Because God calculates and says, if this guy starts a building project, for the next three years, it may distract him and is at a strategic point. Bread. Was it not in heaven that bread that was made already from the oven of heaven? This is not a parable. Real bread came to the earth. It's not a parable. It's a parable. The Bible said there was a certain day. Real bread came. The Bible calls it angel's bread. Manna from heaven. And they ate it. Prepared blessings. When God says it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness, don't just expect flour or expect him to bless what you plant. You can step into prepared blessings. See, prepared blessings you always hear me say it is a time redemption system it is not everything you must build by yourself God can build certain things and give you is the Lord speaking to us tonight as someone can come and say man of God this is what I will be doing you don't have any business you don't have any investment but the Lord spoke to me that every month for the rest of your life, one million, 
is coming from me to you until I die until Jesus comes now it's not a license to be lazy but that's prepared blessings daily bread so when you say God give us our daily bread he said what did you do that you are saying I should give you daily bread daily bread is for those who will stand to see that his will be done if you are not ready, go and look for oven. Go and look for the farm. Go and look for the seed. Go and look for the baker. Look for the yeast. Make your bread. But when you say, oh God, more than just these things, you see my heart. Kai, God. You see God. See, this is why you hear the testimonies of some people and it will annoy you. You'll be like, what is all this one? Someone is saving 100, 100,000 every month. And I'm not saying that is wrong. You want to buy a car. How much? 5.2. Thank God. You are saving 100, 100,000 every month. But another person says, Lord, whether it's the car or it's me, everything belongs to you. You know this. And someone will just come and say, I'm leaving this country. I bought this car, 6 million. What do you have? He says, I have 150. He says, just bring it. Did you buy the car? How much is the duty of that car? prepared blessings if you ever desire prosperity in isolation to God's purposes you are already in error completely the value of good things it is that they give us the allowance to serve him see this is the foundation and I'm glad tomorrow is a workers meeting a workers retreat and all of that we'll take it from there our retreat has started this night it's very important listen I continue to teach everybody who belongs to this ministry and connected to this family. This is the core of our ideology. That everything we ever press for, it is to be able to give us the allowance to serve the purposes of the kingdom. So when you see us teach on wealth and abundance or the anointing or speed, none of these things are taught in isolation. They are useless when they are in isolation. They are only taught with respect to the role they play. When we hate poverty and hate demons and cast them out, whether through teaching or deliverance or whatever, the reason is because we have discerned how they interrupt God's agenda. So if I cause poverty from your life, it's not just because poverty is bad. It's because it, I have discerned that it has an effect. The impedance that it provides in your making spiritual progress is why we cause it. I don't care what stands your way. If it will not allow you serve God and not allow you advance, it deserves the judgment of God. Are we together? Yes. Why do we minister speed? Why do we pray for favor? None of these things are valuable themselves in isolation. But once your heart is stayed on birthing his purposes, then you can stand with confidence and say, give me this day. There is an allocation for today. There is. There is. There is an allocation for the day. When Jesus finished his crusade, three days, the people were hungry. If he sent them like that, something will be wrong about his representing God. And he said, don't send them that way. Feed them. The people said, where are we going to feed them? And they brought the young lad, Andrew, brought a young lad with five loaves and two fish. Jesus blessed it and said, let me show you how the economy of heaven works. And they distributed it. Everybody ate. Why did they eat? Because they attended the crusade, not because they were roaming around the road. The only people who received that miracle were those who were around that crusade ground. If you were not in that crusade ground, go to your bakery. See, there is a yoke that is given to non-kingdom people. That yoke should not be in your life. Your passion for God should exempt you. Please believe what I'm telling you. I will never allow my life, whether financially or otherwise, to subscribe to the burden, to be in the similitude of the burden of a man who does not carry the program of God. Our experience should not be the same. Are we together? Oh dear, our time.
time is gone. I want to close early today because we have our retreat. Let's do one. <laughs> Give us our daily bread. God is a giver and the bread is daily. Don't forget. Daily is not a parable. Daily is daily. If I do not experience favor after 24 hours, I will go for a retreat. Now, our lives are in levels, but I'm saying this is where you press into. It's true. There are times if I experience favor, maybe once, twice a year, the name of the Lord be praised. But as I've grown to know God and I've seen the excellency that comes with bearing his name, I have seen that there is a provision for my daily bread. There's nothing the devil can do about it. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Next verse. Let's look at verse 12. Maybe we'll stop there. Ah, this is a good one. Forgive us our sins or debt as we forgive our debtors. Now he's teaching how to pray. <laughs> Let me teach you something here that is very powerful. Number one, this has nothing to do with sin or debt. You see, when you study scripture, you have to trust the spirit of revelation to open truth for you. What is the revelation behind this? Forgive us our debts or as our sins as we forgive our debtors. Let me tell you this. Number one, it means all men are human. It's a revelation that when you approach God in prayer, listen very carefully, that in your petition, something should happen to you. There is a knowledge about God you should know that God knows. Your prayer is not necessarily answered because of the flawlessness and the accuracy of your compliance. That there is a provision in God's dealing with you. He knows you are human and that that same revelation is something you must carry as you approach men watch this all men are human all men fail all men grow weary the revelation behind this statement is to maintain an allowance for the humanity of men in your dealing with the subject of prayer be, I'm, I know why I'm saying this because many religious people say, ah, forgive us our sins. Ah, that's minus me. Let me tell you, he's not, I know you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The idea here is not sin or death. The idea is the fact that whoever can come under the influence of this must be human. Only God is immune from this. Are you getting the idea? And so he's saying that when God is dealing with you, he has left provision for your humanity. He knows you are frail. Psalms 100 and verse 3. When God opened my eyes to this scripture, it blessed me in no small way. Psalms 100 and verse 3. Read with me. One, two, read. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Uh -huh. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. The sheep of of his pasture he knows oh i'm sorry psalms 103 103 103 that's that's a scripture for another psalms 103 13 and 14 who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healed all thy disease are we together verse 13 like as a father pitied his children so the Lord pitied them that fear him. 14. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. This is God. He knows that, look, by and large, man is dust. Dust. That's why sometimes you can be ans asking something. And God already knows what you really wanted to ask. He knows that what you are asking and the foolish way you are, you are, you are carrying is not your, you are weak as a man. So he bypasses what your mouth is saying and answers what your heart is really praying. This is a God of heaven. 
You can pray and say, oh God, help me and kill my husband. And God knows that you don't mean to kill your husband. It's just that you are angry. Your husband has done something. In your heart, you are saying, I love this man. Why does he continue to hurt me? And your heart is really saying, God, change him for me. That's the one God answers. The, oh God, kill my husband. God just allows you. Or oh Lord, if I don't give you this tithe by tomorrow, 12 o'clock, let me die. God knows. You know, most, most of us have prayed those kinds of unbelieving prayers. And as soon as the money came, you forgot till 12 midnight and you are still alive. <laughs> Maintain allowance for the humanity of men. It is, it is something you receive in the place of prayer and is a mindset that you have as you approach prayer. It is not just about forgiveness of sins. Uh -uh. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That means the Holy Spirit is not in you. Are we together now? So he's not necessarily talking about sin as it were. He's talking about the fact that men are frail. Let me tell you this. It's a powerful revelation. Matthew chapter 18. You will read something that will bless you now. Matthew 18, a long reading but will be very fast. Starting from 21. Matthew 18, 21. Look up, please. I'm reading. Just write it and look. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? So he's talking about letting go. Are we together? Verse what now? 22. Jesus said to him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. 23. Therefore, now watch this. Jesus is about to explain. Every time you don't understand what Jesus is saying, whether you ask him or not, he will go ahead to use a parable and guide you so that he doesn't leave you in confusion. Are we together? Yes. He said, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king. Look up, please. Which would take account of his servants. 24. Read on, please. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents an offender he's owing him are we together verse 25 but for as much as he had not to pay his lord commanded him to be sold you know in ancient times they, they would sell like slave market they would sell the man sell the children sell everything the lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made 26 watch this the servant fell down and worshipped him saying Lord have patience with me I will pay thee all the master knew that he's just talking because of pressure he didn't have the power to do it are you seeing now forgive us our sins it's a revelation it's more than the issue of sin and death next verse then the Lord of that servant was what moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him that means he saw that even that talk he's talking, he doesn't have the power to honor it. Next verse. But the same servant, uh -huh, the same servant went out and found one of his, he was passing the street and just saw someone passing too and remembered that that person owes him a hundred pence and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat. You see that? Come. This is it. He took him by the throat. Are we together? Saying, pay me, thou that owest. Look at, look at this man now. Next verse. And his fellow servant fell down the same way. Are you seeing now? You went to God in prayer. You know what he did. Now it's your turn. He fell down and besought him saying, have patience with me. Same words and I will pay thee all. Let's look at what this our man did. And he would not but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt, 31. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very sorry and came and told their Lord all that was done, 32. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all thy debt because thou desirest me shouldest not thou also have had compassion so it's about compassion much more than forgiveness 
a state of compassion even as I've had pity on you is a revelation that when you approach God know this about God are we together that God has kept a dimension of his compassion knowing you are human knowing you are frail and he's saying even from that place of prayer carry that template as you relate with people Koinonia is quiet now this one has taught you a bit you know all the other part was God you demanding receiving this one now demands that there is a reciprocity from you you are just thinking about somebody right now ah, somebody that I will jack him like this man could you be that person show me compassion oh God I will never forgive you from the uh, uh, how they say it over, over my, my, my till I die and God is watching what you are doing see you will never be able to walk in the world of men till you keep an allowance for the frailty and the weakness of men men are weak men are frail sometimes they would disappoint you when there is an interest to protect but they are men as a pastor as a man of god if you don't know this you'll be in trouble sam promised me that you will buy a car for me by march he even wrote it he called it a vow what is today's date today is september i'm just joking it's an example and sam has not brought the car and sam has the boldness to sit in front when i'm preaching and i say lift up your hands to receive the prophecy and he will even kneel down and lift up his heart in my mind i'm already saying minus you my grace will not work for you again i will not waste and not you are an unprofitable compassion there is no such thing like we don't have this in our family what family are you talking about all these excuses that people give say apostle we are not like that in our family once we 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 are warriors we fight to the finish then you should know what it means to be a believer see truly as a person I hardly get disappointed in men because the provision has been left already you see that Apostle, let me get a job. You know, I get a job. This water is water bottle that they will start putting in there. You are now a director. You see, let me teach you something. Ministers, pastors, hear me. All these promises that you carry from members, members promise me this lift up your eyes to the heavens and leave men home. they will frustrate you I will pay rent for you for one month as my seed to your ministry by month two you'll say I've changed my mind you know I didn't know that the the leaders will come back into power I was expecting that you see human beings you take your eyes away from men and look up to Jesus Christ alone, the Son of the living God. Are we together? It's very, very important. Do you have compassion? Can you forgive? And more than forgiveness, there are some of you, if you are angry, it's until God gives you a revelation of maybe hellfire or directly tell you help this person is a bad spirit is a wicked spirit that over my dead body talk be careful be careful there are husbands who cannot forgive their wives they are together there are wives who cannot forgive their husbands when they are 30 years in marriage you say you offended me the third year of marriage till today i've not forgiven you and yet we can go to god and say lord thank you for your mercy God, if I don't pray three hours for the next one month, let me die on my way to Kaduna. You didn't even, you didn't even pray, even for 10 minutes. 
yet you have finished your masters. It's called, it's called compassion. Listen, I'm trying to plant in us something. Believers must be governed by a culture. Don't, don't conquer the limitation of your earthly family. There is no such thing like we are not like that. Nobody is born with compassion. It's something that comes with revelation. Can you love and love genuinely? Some of us have black books. Huh? Black, uh, black books. You write the names. That's wickedness. Even as Christ forgave. That luggage will interrupt your prayer life. Do you know one of the greatest ways to minister is to minister by love? It's amazing how all of these encumbrances can unclog, they can clog the flow of God's power. I want to prophesy, please come Pastor Femi. I want to prophesy to Pastor Femi right now. And I stand here, but I remember he kept me waiting at the restaurant the other day. He promised me that he was coming and forgot and he left me there. Now I'm not justifying what he did for instance. But now you want to prophesy and that anger and that annoyance. You see that? The nature of your prophecy will justify that it's not God that sent it. Because God gives good things. When you walk by love, even your health tells. There are people who are sick today not because of oppression. The way they think. They think until veins. The doctor, these veins that come out on people's faces because of anger. They are, they are imagining yet their hands are physically cannot live like that you cannot be productive that way when they see other people just giving god joy koinonia is done and they are greeting ah, Pastor Femi, how are you they are just angry and they are waiting for who is angry like them so that i say come now that you are you are no. rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice learn to rejoice learn to forgive learn to let go it's okay it's okay the pot was not your own. The food was not your own. You know it's wrong. You don't see a pot that you don't have anything and just go and eat what is there. I was hungry. I had visitors. Sometimes the people may not even be repentant. Just let go. This is how unforgiveness works. I'm holding him. I'm not moving either. Are you seeing now? I can't move holding him. I'm holding him now. Yet I want to move. I've kept him bound and I'm bound myself. Forgiveness is a type of giving. There is a type of giving called forgiveness. When you can forgive, you are a giver. It's not only seeds that you give. Forgive us our sins. All men are humans. Don't kill your child because of the report card he brought. All men are humans. They increase salary. Your son came back with a report card, second to the last. You want to kill him. He's a human being. I'm not justifying what he's doing, and I'm not saying it's painful to raise school fees. Don't kill the boy just because he brought that result. The boy you are killing today can be a prime minister tomorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Learn to be there for people. I've taught it in this ministry. May God make you the shoulder for wounded people to be able to lean on. That you are the one when you see people crying, you are not the one who says, look at this person crying, crocodile uh, tears. You are a wicked person to see a human being crying and you are still saying it's crocodile tears. That you can stand and tell the person, look, I don't know why you are crying, but let's agree. Can you believe that I don't have transport? No problem. No problem. Let's go. We'll share together. The attitude. That is the attitude of a prayer warrior. That when you want to pray, when you approach God, you know that you are human. That's why I like this guy's song. Um, what's his name? Um, K Strings. That Menei song. It's a very powerful song. Because it's a revelation of the frailty of men. Men are frail. Men are very frail. 
there was a day these people who beg we're going to pray shortly some of these people who beg they just stood at my gate the kind of knock that they knocked that gate you know even the polite it's as if they carried stone bang 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 ah i said my god what is going on immediately i opened i just saw the woman backing a child having one i was i was sad because i was praying and it was a big interruption I looked at the woman I was wondering and she looked at me I could see her hunger ravaged face I looked at the baby and then I just remembered I said let's assume I was the one or that was my mother and then I said what are you looking for then she now lied I said madam you are lying she's okay yes she lied but this really the thing I can you imagine that all that drama is happening there I can close my gate and say carry your instead of you to just beg you have you have now spoiled my mind and you are doing this there's this thing we call losing temper. I cast that spirit from your life forever. One more time, I cast that spirit from your life forever. I cast that spirit from your life forever. If there is anyone here under the influence of such a spirit, I'm saying it again by the grace of God and the spirit of the living God. I command that spirit to come out of your life now. Huh? Some of you can carry shoe and nail, hammer, anything. It's a demonic thing. When you are approaching the prayer ministry, you must be able to replace all of those devilish things with genuine compassion. How can you be a father when you don't have that, that allowance? Children are children. They will be stupid every once and again. Are we together? Someone was sending a text to someone to beg me for money that I will give him. Then I think maybe he forgot and forwarded the text to me. He wrote the number and told the person how, how to say it. Now I'm not looking, I am Abba, so I'm not. He had already told the person what not to say and what to say. When I saw it, I looked at the text and then the person later realized that I made a mistake. The person could not even, I tried to call the person, the person did not even pick because he just felt, this. I'm, I'm, I'm dead, I'm finished. So while the person was complaining and doing that, I did a transfer to that person's account. And then I said, this part, give the person you want to pay. This one is for you. That was it. Then the person replied me and said, I'm ashamed of myself. I said, no. I said, what then is the excellency of being a father? Ah. Ta -da -da. one who has that mindset I also receive it in the place of prayer the grace to give allowance to people allowance to people there are times people are talking to me and I know they are lying I know what they are saying is not true but I can discern they are not lying because they are wicked people if you are going through the pressure they are going through sometimes you may be tempted to be like that and it is that ability to be able to not endorse what they are doing but override it with father Are we together? If God can show you that kind of compassion and you don't have for many, you are not praying according to God's pattern. You cannot say, Lord, look down. My, Listen, there are many of us now, what is happening in our family is just because the man that was wicked is your father. 
but the truth is that that father man is under the causes of many people because of the way that man behaved for other people are we, are we together now and then you now see and say ah my father was a doctor many people he now destroyed many people they've caused them oh god overlook my father's wrongs and god says what of the people in your company what of the people in your company someone was overwhelmed with the school fees of the children and he quickly carried one bag of water to rush and go and sell it and you cut the person and the person just knelt down and was rolling there and said i'm not a thief sir and my wife is in the hospital i've gone through pain i'm not saying endorse him but have the eyes to hear both the mouth and the hearts of men you cannot deal with everybody generically Many times, I don't like to see people without invitation because of how it interrupts my plans. But there are people that come to my house and knock and I look at them and once I see them, I can discern the heaviness in their hearts. And I say, although this is not the way I do it, but I have to attend to you. Listen, let me tell you this. If you do not show compassion the day you will need it, that day, that's the day you will know that it is good to sow seeds of compassion. Many of us are not compassionate. Are we together? We'll stop here. We'll take part three. I'll finish this up. Then I'll now show you the dynamics of prayer. But this is very powerful. Our Father, who art in heaven, faith, hallowed be your name, reverence. Your kingdom come, priority. Give us this day your needs met on account of your desire to see his kingdom come and then forgive us we stand forgiving every one of us because of his mercy and grace why will you not show the same grace to others some of you after this night's prayer meeting you need to go back and just call your younger sister your younger brother and he said you know what it's three years now it's over with all of that. We cannot be fighting. Some of you can even be here at Koinonia. After Koinonia, you just walk up to that department and just hug the person. And you, when they hug you, make sure you don't behave like a devil. After this preaching that I've spent time to preach. When somebody comes to make peace, how are you? Don't just sit and say, but, but you know, there's no special ceremony. We are all sinners. We were saved by the grace and the mercy of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is selfishness that produces thieves. When you are stealing a man's phone, in your mind, for instance, you are not thinking, this person now, what of the contacts in his phone? Could it be that he's waiting for an alert for a job that will help his family? Could it be the first out of 20 people in the family you don't care all i know is phones look at the people who steal phones for instance not just around here all around the nation they can literally carry maybe a knife or an axe or something harm somebody the kind of injury that two hundred thousand will not solve and carry a phone of fifty thousand and sell it for six thousand that is the epitome of self what of people who their loved ones die and then they collect inheritance and uncles and aunties say come and sit down here i am your father's elder brother your mother's younger brother bring all the money and then they take peanuts and give the family and sit on their inheritance self what will make a politician carry scholarship for students students that some of them are the only ones sponsoring themselves and he will carry their entire scholarship and put it at the back of his pocket and live with it self the foundation of wickedness is selfishness the foundation of wickedness is self-centeredness that is why the apex the zenith of love is surrender and sacrifice are you learning this now 
so the bible says to know the will of god thank you thank you my dear let's talk a bit about the will of god now i've done a few teachings about the will of god we are still discussing the second point dimension of prayer the concept of the will of god must be understood for your prayer to be accurate and to be rich the will of god means many things for many people I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to tell you. I've listened to different teachings about the will of God and I've explored, I've studied the Bible myself and I've found out that many things people teach as relating the will of God is wrong. It's wrong. Two scriptures, Colossians 1 verse 9, please. It's an anthem here every time we continue. For this cause we also, Paul is speaking, since the day we heard of it do not cease to do what so he's talking of prayer here pray for you and to desire that he be filled with number one the knowledge of his will and then in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so a man can be filled with the knowledge of god's will romans chapter 12 and verse 2 the last verse and then i teach a bit on the will of god romans chapter 12 and verse 2 ready and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god what is the will of god the answer was clearly stated in matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 what is the will of god matthew chapter 6 and 10 everybody read it one to read thy kingdom come it's not supposed to be a full stop there it's actually supposed to be a comma thy kingdom come by thy will being done in the earth as it is in the heavens so what is the will of god the will of god represents every action that causes the kingdom to come and causes Christ to be glorified. That is the will of God. Please understand this. In the simplest term, the will of God is not just what is right. Because the concept of rightness is relative in our world. The will of God is any activity and any action. Let me define it very well. Number one, inspired of the spirit. Number two, consistent with scripture. Number three, that is able to cause the kingdom, the influence of Christ to come and that Christ be glorified. Whatever activity that revolves within that circumference can be called the will of God. Please understand this. The will of God, number one, inspired of the spirit. Number two, consistent with the character of scripture number three is able to cause the influence of heaven to be revealed in a life and within a territory and number four it ultimately glorifies christ whatever does not subscribe to these terms cannot should never be called the will of god this is a very powerful teaching are we together the will of God this is the answer whatever has the opportunity to cause the kingdom to come and to cause Christ to be glorified and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men the will of God now watch this most of the main teachings have taught about the good will of god the acceptable the perfect will of god and so on and so forth and those things are there but i i do not think that those are i believe this is my opinion and i i believe it's consistent from scripture that there are only two dimensions to the will of god number one i call it the revealed will of god number two i call it the permissible will of god that's all there is and let me let me define it very quickly i hope you are not confused in this lecture Remember, we are still on point two. Are we together? The second dimension of prayer. But now it has necessitated doing a quick course on understanding the will of God. The revealed will of God. Write this down, please. 
the revealed will of God is the will of God as revealed primarily from scripture full stop the will of God as as known to man primarily from scripture there is a reason why I say that please follow carefully God will give us intelligence now that the revealed will of God represents the dimension of God's will that has been made known to man primarily from scripture notice i didn't say only from scripture but primarily from scripture there are other auxiliary support systems of obtaining the revealed will of god one is prophecy one is visions one dreams are we together but the degree of error and inaccuracy in all these other methods is the reason why they all submit to scripture i have taught this that the prophecy of scripture is the highest the noblest and most accurate of all prophecies word of knowledge prophecy like the dispensing of that gift or that office and all other spiritual media for obtaining the will of god they work but they have a very high degree of error and the errors are caused by many things there is the error of perception there is the error of reception there is the error of interpretation are we together now there is the error that comes as a result of the low level of renewal in the interpreter all of these things together are a mix and they corrupt the purity of the voice of god through all those channels you are safest when you understand and discern the will of god as revealed from scripture i believe strongly that scripture was written so that it would not be changed if scripture was only recorded in a radio it would have been changed by now scripture was written it is written you hardly change what is written are we together that means when i want to explore the will of god for his program for my life my first area of search is not a dream look up please my first area of search is not apostle joshua selman to prophesy to you my first area of search is scripture and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture that is able to do what to make you wise unto salvation It is very important let me give you an example oh boy an example of the revealed will of god first timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 first timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 everyone please read ready one to read who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth it is god's desire this is a revealed will of god there is no need asking oh god do you want my father to be saved oh god do you want my mother to be saved your prayer is lord give me the strategy for the salvation not whether he will be saved or not asking god whether someone should be saved is not correct because scripture has already opened his will number two asking whether it is god's desire for the saints to do well is not a will that is hidden are we together now yes jeremiah 29 11 for i know the thoughts that i think towards you say yet the lord thoughts of peace or good and not of evil to bring you an expected end there is the will of god as revealed from scripture this is very important as we prepare to go to the third dimension because you see until you know what the will of god is you will not be able to make certain requests there are things we do as a ministry there are privileges we give to workers there are privileges we give to leaders are we together now it is it is something that has been put on ground 
the workers the leaders know and based on that knowledge it's not a mystery if they are if the workers are not sure they can go to their heads of department and their executives who help to interpret what has been put down by the ministry as far as their welfare and their provision is concerned are we together now yes for instance in this ministry whatever program we are doing as workers or whatever the moment it is night it is mandatory that under normal circumstances vehicles are around to help alleviate the stress of moving in darkness it's not something that is a special arrangement it is so after this service now there are buses that will be waiting to pick people are we together now now asking apostle do you think that there will be a boss after this service it's unnecessary because that will has been revealed are you getting what i'm saying now the scripture already has the most accurate dimension of god's will his will as revealed in scripture and then demonstrated in christ now listen carefully the bible calls jesus the image of the invisible god and i've taught you here that jesus came as a correction of the perceptions we had about god there were many things we did not know about god there were many things we knew but not properly about god so we look at the life of jesus in his earth work and we learn god by looking at jesus there's no need asking whether god is a god of love we see it in jesus we see how he treated sinners and publicans we see how he treated children we see how he wept at people's funerals so we know that god is love because jesus is was and continues to be love are we together now god is a giver how do i know that five loaves four loaves little children have you any catch cast your net to the right side his life was full of giving till he gave his life so i know god is a giver so when the bible says he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him i trust god because i see that truth of scripture revealed in jesus i know that god is slow to anger and judgment why because jesus was walking with some disciples and they saw some other people and said can we command fire to fall and jesus said do you not know what spirit you are of the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Jesus became a demonstration of that. So nobody will come and talk nonsense and tell you, ah, God will kill you tomorrow, throw away all that garbage. Jesus, greater than any prophet, is a representation of the fact that God is slow to anger. Let God be true and every man a liar. Are we together now? It is the reason why we edit prophecies based on scripture, and based on jesus the christ looking up to jesus he can be looked up to he is the author and the finisher of our faith that means our journey is with reference to the standard he gave us there is nowhere in all the 33 and a half years of jesus that i see him intentionally plotting evil against any so god does not think evil because as seen in the christ it was not there it is true that he judges but god is slow to anger so away with that theology that makes it look like god is chasing every man just to destroy you it's not supposed to be a license for licentiousness don't get me wrong but that it is consoling to know that we are wrapped up in the love of the father behold what manner of love the father had bestowed when jesus saw people who were who who were crying in funerals he joined them to weep we do not have a high priest who had not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity you know why i teach you this because the days that are coming are coming with too much spirituality and spiritism if you are not grounded on scripture many things will confuse you you will soon not know who god is again because there are pseudo actions that look spiritual but they are not consistent with the christ look up to jesus not apostle joshua selman look up to jesus not a preacher paul only said follow me as i follow christ before you follow me see who i'm following are we together let me tell you this 
the revelation of God's love in my life has done something to me. When I say God loves me, I really mean it. It's not because of the results. He loves me. I have an understanding with God. Not only see my father. This is not about covenant of ministry and this. God loves me. I hear the chains falling. That's what is happening tonight. Chains from all kinds of teachings. Well-meaning but destructive. The will of God is that all men be saved. And all men come into the knowledge of him. It is the reason why in this ministry, for instance, we do not fight our wounded soldiers. We stand for them. If people do things and go down, we are quick to come. You see me preach and it looks like I'm always holding a cane. Yes, I'm holding a cane, but remember thy rod and thy staff. I told you they don't do the same thing. Rod is for correction. Staff is to draw you. You need both. If you are a preacher and you have only staff, you will see the kind of members you produce. If you have only a rod, you will also see the kind of members you produce. To totally comfort people, you need the rod and the staff. Hallelujah. I love people. If you are not growing in love, you do not know God. And the love of Christ is not at work in you. It doesn't matter what village you come from. We have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Are we together? We have been grafted into that life of love. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Not when you heal the sick, not when you preach. Love. I hear the chains falling. Let fear live your life. I hear the chains falling. You cannot serve God in fear. You serve God in reverence. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains One of the most beautiful times in Koinonia here is when we are done with the service and I have to hug my children. You see all of them come over me. That thing gives me a feeling that I cannot begin to describe. No matter how you look at me and no matter what you are holding, I turn to my children and give them a big hug. They come with their, their wet shirt from fighting over Jews and so I still hug them like that. I love them. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed. The love of God is a very powerful revelation. Many people have exaggerated it. And their lives continue to be shredded into nonsense. They allow the devil to just come. And people have exaggerated the love of the Father to the point that they have covered the issue of hellfire. Hell is still there. Listen to my message last week. Hell is there. Hell is real lake of fire is even worse than hell many people talk about hell and leave lake of fire hell is a spirit hell itself will be relocated to the lake of fire those who are in hell now have not officially started their judgment the judgment will officially start when death hell the grave will be relocated into the lake of fire we don't know who is there but one thing we know is that there are spirits who are there bound in everlasting chains what i just told you is also love Use this as a father and see how correct your children will be. When I was in secondary school, before they flog you, they would tell you what you did wrong. You will accept that I did wrong. They will pray for you, then they will flog you. <laughs> Let's start Koinonia secondary schools. You will see how we we'll train these children. I'm not going to bring this secular, demonic, Babylonian training imagine that you flog your child and he knows what he did wrong just because you prayed for him does not mean you should not whip him foolishness is bound in the the heart of a child the rod of correction not prayer will drive it far from him there is a psychological testimony that your child needs A 
I'm only serving what the chef prepared this night. <laughs> Remember I told you that I'm only a waiter. The principal chef is the Holy Spirit. And his meals are always balanced and nourishing. Say amen. amen. So there is the revealed will of God. Number two, there is the permissible will of God. Let me talk about that very quickly. What is the permissible will of God? Now look up please. I will say it, then I will repeat it as you write. The permissible will of God represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness, God's character, and that directly exalt the Christ. The permissible will of God represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness, comma, God's character comma and directly exalt christ now just because it is permissible does not mean it is necessarily not the will of god permissible there does not mean god is managing it look up please there are things in scripture that are not written verbatim there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you will be in zaria now there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you have five children now please look up there are dimensions of god's will that are not stated directly from scripture at that point we use the tools of righteousness we use the tools of god's character and we use the tools of the exaltation of christ as the compass to help us to be able to walk around that will. these three first then in addition prophecies visions and the rest come notice the bible says the kingdom of god is in talk to me righteousness peace and joy never in visions never in prophecy no the kingdom of god is in righteousness that means god's methodology peace joy in the holy ghost now let me tell you this this is the major area where as believers we have suffered a great deal again and again this dimension of understanding the permissible will of god sam has a program in two weeks return to worship now whether or not you had a vision or a dream or god just put it in your heart the truth is that that program if it is done in righteousness are we together if it is done consistent with christ's character and if it will end up glorifying christ it is the will of god that will support the kingdom as powerful as the will revealed in scripture are you getting me now this is where all the other auxiliary things like finding who to marry a job to do there is nowhere in scripture where it is written that pastor alpha marry annie but within the boundary of righteousness if you marry an unbeliever it was not the will of god are we together now but that within the boundary of the will of god you can find a sister that loves god and her life is consistent what is virtue virtue is a reflection of the, your closeness to the character of christ so I don't need to see a demonic sister or a devilish brother and ask, is that God's will? No. In Koinonia here, for instance, if you come and meet me and you tell me this girl that you use for example, you like her, for instance, it can be within the boundary of the will of God. If you are a well-behaved brother and you are responsible, are we together? It's my responsibility to vet you based on the will of god righteousness responsibility love and i can tell you with all the blessings of god and god will stamp it and endorse it are we together there are very few people on earth who because of their lives listen carefully and because of the nature of what they do for the kingdom god will meticulously place restrictions around everything in their life because the role that they play someone like me now you see 
almost everything about my life is meticulously guided do you know why the reason is because i carry a burden of a generation and the implication of everything i do is generational but that is not that cannot be a template for you it is the price i have to pay for carrying this anointing there is a maximum number of cars god has told me i may never have it if at all it comes and it's more than that you see god has searched my life and he has he has optimized the things that must be in my life for me to be effective that functioning at your optimal level will require this there are people who functioning at their optimal level will require that they are millionaires not billionaires some it will even require that they are not millionaires at all but it cannot be a template for everybody scripture come this brother now can be trusting god for a job lord should i go to enugu or should i go to lagos it is not written here directly the only thing is that the path of the justice has a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day so these are foundations i can take out time if this brother is given a job right now he needs to look at that job does this job compromise on my work with god are we together will this help me to be responsible if it does then within that this gentleman can safely go on that job now if for any reason that decision he has taken is against destiny god will go out of his way god does not only lead by saying start he leads by saying stop there are times you don't wait for him to say start you move if he keeps quiet he's endorsing you if he says stop you return I, I'm, I'm showing you certain things about the will of god oh god should i build a house god is a god of portions it's never his will for me to be a tenant for life so if some money comes wisdom that is profit <laughs> wisdom that is profitable to direct should tell me buy land and start building if it is not the will of god god will show me are we together our precious men here have married good and lovely sisters not all of them saw visions some of them just directly in the name of honesty they saw a sister who loved god they came to me and i said god bless you you may be waiting forever for a dream a vision some occult type encounter now listen I'm, I'm telling i'm using this as a point of contact listen my brother let me tell you i'm saying it is not a you can sit down and trust god look at a godly sister god already gave you what virtue is virtue is not just the ability to cook virtue is your closeness to the character of christ find a godly sister that looks like that when a job 29 man marries a proverbs 31 woman they will give birth to a psalm 112 hope are we together there are people today who god already answered them and gave them good jobs but not understanding the concept of the will of god they are waiting for a vision nmpc gave you a job you rejected it because god called you into ministry i'm not saying it's wrong good good things came to you and you threw it away and god said i've tried for you and you are there now wallowing around and being punished for not discerning the will of god say in the name of jesus i obtain grace to see to hear and to discern the will of god you are with a, a man who is smoking and drinking and ungodly and you said i would change him you are not in the will of god let me just tell you straight up this night 
the ministry of transformation is exclusively the ministry of the holy ghost any man that does not change before marrying you will seldom change he will remain that way and any man who changes just because he wants to marry you has not changed whatever a man does to only you he's not really is not a virtue with him if he's kind to only you he's not kind if he's truly kind he will be kind to everybody kindness will so implicate him even if he tries to lie to come out a lady who washes only your plates is not neat the virtue of thoroughness and excellence must spill out in every area i hear the chains falling hey, i hear the chains when god brings a destiny helper that is blessed you don't fight him because you have been taught that all blessings come from god through men to men and if the men don't have what you are looking for you will not have it so it does not make you to look down on others but you pay attention when joseph of arimathea is coming you pay attention when pharaoh is coming oh joseph pay attention when boaz is coming ruth pay attention when Ahasuerus is calling for women, Esther, pay attention. It's how God lifts men. God lifts men by bringing those greater than you to lift you. It's a technology. It's not hidden. How does God increase a ministry? By anointing them and putting the word so that they minister to people. And the people that are built by that word will communicate benevolence. The offering you gave is not going to heaven. The offering you gave is what will pay boss tomorrow. By sounds. So it's not a mystery. The more I continue to be anointed and I bless you and dispense spiritual value. The more this ministry will continue to increase and I will also increase. There's no gimmick about it. So if you are poor and your pews are empty, the problem is the value, not just demons. The knowledge of God's will will help us to stop talking a lot of nonsense. Bishop Oyedeko says, every man's calling is a high calling. Nobody has a low calling. Everybody's calling is a high calling. So if you are failing in your life, take responsibility. Don't say, God made me to be small. Sit down and say, why is my life not moving forward? This cannot be the will of God for me. To keep begging every day as a man moving from pillar to post. I am a prayer warrior. But in addition, I should be blessed to be a blessing. Genesis 12 verse 2. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. Are we together? If you get married four months five months your wife refuses to get pregnant don't sit down asking nonsense and say whether that is god's will be fruitful genesis 1 26 be fruitful is his written will the priest that blessed you on behalf of god prophesied to you immediately you should know something is wrong listen obey scripture if you are wrong let god take responsibility are we together a job that makes you compromise on your spiritual life a job that takes down your prayer life a job that cuts you away from the community of believers that can build you you don't need a vision get out of that job immediately i don't care how much you are being paid what shall it profit a man he's talking profit if he gains the whole world and loses his soul i repeat get out of that job get out of that job don't sit down asking should i go pack your load and leave are we together yes you are in a church for instance that is full of manipulation and full of all kinds of things and you see that the character of what is done is not in accordance to scripture there is no integrity there is no godliness there is no feeding of the word of god there is the responsibility of a shepherd as designed by scripture any man who is not doing it is not a shepherd period 
I will give you pastors after my heart. You sit down and you, every week, everything from you is going. You pack your load and get out of that place. There is no need praying and say, Lord, should I stay there? No. Are we together? The will of God. So when I'm praying, back to what we are teaching. When I'm praying, my awareness of the will of God. So he's praying. Father, apostle, use this lady for example. And I just found out that I like her. What is wrong with it? I'm not saying, I'm not saying she's your, 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 your wife. But if God joins two of you, we're happy. We join you. What, what? That's, I mean. Listen. God never told Ruth, Boaz is her husband. Boaz, hunger, took Ruth and Naomi. They knew they were about to die. She went to a field to clean her thing. Boaz saw her, a benevolent man. No strings attached. All marital processes start with a purified motif. That is an expression of who you truly are. He said, I don't know who this young girl is. But leave something for her. Let her be able to take it back to her mother. And God said, that's right. Remember, God is looking for those who create the lineage that Jesus will be part of. So he would not handle anything with laxity. Because Jesus is about to come through that tribe. Are we together? If you come and meet me as a brother and say, Apostle, God is showing me a particular lady. I'll say, let me stand representing what the parents will tell you. Straight up, I'm not even going to waste your time. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Congratulations. Are you a responsible gentleman? Yes. Prove it. There are two kinds of responsibility. There's psychological responsibility where you are getting the mindset that will help you to be serious two there is structural responsibility where now you are beginning to produce food even if you don't have structural responsibility and you have a mindset that wins based on the word of god we can stand to say no the way you are going what is in your mind will eventually come are you seeing that but you are not responsible you are not under authority. You are a careless person. You live your life. Your relationship is like occult. Nobody is going to give you any daughter. At least not, not any of my ladies here. And you ladies, we have created a template to help you. If you like, don't follow a path that God has created for your redemption. And, and follow cunningly devised fables until it lands you in trouble. See, the, the, the house of God is supposed to be a place of guidance. I don't need to go to the Bible to find out whether it's the will of God for me to go back home this night. As soon as service is done and I'm done, I go back home. Why? Going back home subscribes to the law of responsibility. That every good man should have a home and should go back home and sleep at home. Are we together? Even the madman tried to stay in a place. It's the demons that made him restless. He tried. So men who don't stay at home. They are not responsible. It's a revelation. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. Let's tie up this thing. So, the permissible will of God. Please look up, please. The permissible will of God. Actions that are within the boundary of righteousness. If you have to cheat your brother to increase, you cannot say it's the will of God. You cannot call that favor. If you have to bring people down to rise, that is not favor. If you have to kill to rise, that is not favor. If you have to bring 250,000 before you get a job, hello, that is not favor. Let me tell you the truth. No, sir, it is not favor. Knowing what the will of God is. So the first dimension of prayer is fellowship and growth. The second dimension is obtaining promises 
and making requests all of these that we have been discussing are still under that thank you thank you so much the revealed will of god the permissive will of god the third dimension of prayer that we we'll discuss very quickly our time is gone is the dimension that makes for decrees and spiritual legislation decrees and spiritual legislation i've taught you three dimensions of prayer number one the dimension for fellowship and growth number two obtaining promises obtaining promises and i told you that to obtain promises you must number one have a heart that is selfless number two you must ensure that your request is within the boundary of the will of god then you can ask confidently this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything in his name he heareth us are we together and then number three the dimension of decrees and spiritual legislation now please pay attention this is the dimension of prayer that does not so much deal with talking to god this is the dimension of prayer that deals with rearranging realities based on the word of god please understand this is the dimension of prayer that is concerned with not only talking to god but talking to things talking to circumstances talking to time talking to demons talking to elements of creation to line up with the will of god that's why i took out time to talk to you about the will of god because if you do not know the will of god and the provisions of scripture decree and spiritual legislation will not be possible with you what then do we say to these things i know what god has made for me i know what god says should be in my life this is also the realm of prayer where words listen now become like arrows in a man's quiver words are instruments of creation the following scripture ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 please write down these scriptures these are the scriptures that we must have in our minds when we want to engage prayer as a system for making decrees and legislating spiritual realities ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 the a part says where the word of a king is talk to me there is power where the word of a king is and then revelation chapter 5 verse 10 just write it don't give us media just write it down the bible says we have been made unto our god kings and priests or a kingdom of priests and we shall reign not in heaven in the earth so i know under god that in christ my words are not ordinary my words are powerful please listen everybody overflow one two three online listen carefully this part of this teaching concerns you seriously number two proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 i'm giving you a few scriptures that guide you when making decrees and establishing realities in the spirit proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 death and life help us media we have to rush are in the power of the tongue death and life are not in the nozzle of a gun death and life are not in the stone of a catapult death and life are not in the edge of the sword the bible says they are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof i use words to program life 
I use words to program death. I can program life over territories. I can program death over territories. Number three, Job chapter 22 and 28, popular scripture. Write it down, please. Job 22, 28. Thou shalt also decree. Everybody say decree. To decree means to pass as law. Thou shalt decree a thing. And it shall be established not unto everybody, unto the one that decreed it. Thou shalt decree a thing. Thou shalt decree life. Thou shalt decree increase. Thou shalt decree victory. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God has already brought them as the redeemed. Let them say so. Are we together? The word of a king thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established and the light shall shine upon your ways number three isaiah 43 and verse 26 isaiah 43 and verse 26 read it please ready one two read put me in remembrance let us plead together Declare thou that thou mightest be, in other words, bail yourself out of that situation. Bail yourself. Declare yourself acquitted. Come out of that situation by making decrees in prayer. This family, nobody rises. In the name of Jesus, I decree, I declare that the horns that keep men down, I am exempted. The Bible says you are, you are already breaking the chains. You are, you are exempting yourself. Listen, let me tell you. If you do not declare to be justified, then whatever you see, you take it like that. Scripture. Declare thou. Declare what? Declare thou health, declare thou long life, declare thou prosperity, declare thou increase. This is not just some name it, claim it thing. It's, a, it's an ordinance of the kingdom. It is how we function in this kingdom. God is called in Genesis 1, 2, 3, the talking spirit. The spirit that moves by talking. Listen, please do not ever get to a point in your life we are making decrees with understanding looks like a basic spiritual thing you are silent your destiny is silent you are silent every door remains closed declare thou that thou mightest be justified i declare over my life sometimes i stand in front of the mirror and i speak joshua selma you will never go down you go up and up and up. The light of God is upon you. The favor of God is upon you. It's not every time that I pray that I'm praying for you. There are times I'm praying for myself too. There are times I'm praying for my own destiny. Even when I pray for you, I pray with intelligence. I know what the word of God says. Father, this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I declare your people are prospering. They are understanding. Their minds are enlarged. Listen, it's not every time you talk to God no there are times that you stand like ezekiel and speak to the bones can these bones live only thou knowest and he says prophesy prophesy he spoke to the bones and there was a sound and it came and all the bones came together but there was no life and he says son of man he says prophesy to the four winds and say thou wind breathe upon this lane and the breath entered them and they became an exceeding great army isaiah 41 21 the lord showed me this scripture in 2004 and it changed my life one two please read produce your cause saith the lord bring forth your strong reasons saith the king of jacob this is like a law court 
and you are bringing the basis for why such and such and such should happen to you why should i lift your family why should i promote you bring forth your strong reasons see let me tell you this many people are prayerful but they are wordless is why the prayer is not effective we pray in tongues important we pray to god and we ask prayers but most of our prayers are outside of the jurisdiction and the methodologies of the word it is important see this is the missing link this is where the disciples missed it they were praying amiss you can be prayerful and not get results because you are praying amiss fortified by the word the first dimension of jesus's growth as revealed in scripture is getting the word first then we see him praying we did not have the opportunity to hear what he was saying in his 40 days prayer but at least we heard what he said in gethsemane so we know that his prayer was consistent with scripture if it be thy will produce your strong reasons listen believers your prayer life is going to be rich in this end time to the degree to which you understand these dimensions as i approach the throne of grace to pray i know that my prayer life is not all about petitions there is a dimension of it that is tailored for fellowship let me tell you this many times the determinant of what dimension you switch to is often the holy ghost there are times you go with your heart heavy but there are times that he chooses what dimension to be expressed in prayer there are times you go to prayer wanting to decree and bind and cast and god wants koinonia fellowship are we together don't resist it i'm saying this because many prayer warriors have missed it here there are times you go to god and he does he just wants you to be still in his presence and you are just praying in tongues and his power is just upon you and you feel that you are not praying because you are not dissipating energy to be heard by another person whereas there is communion the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the koinonia the fellowship the sharing the participation and under those kinds of most times when god switches to that dimension what is happening to you is impartation most impartations happen through that time of fellowship it is not the binding and casting in that stillness you are about to go for a ministration and you are praying and you are just soaking and for hours all you are doing is lying down there like a dead man thirty minutes one hour and that anointing is on you waves and waves and waves of the glory you stand up from that encounter and go for your ministration and you will see the demonstration of the power and the spirit you will see great grace you will operate in the fullness of the grace that god allocated you ask those who know me when you see me praying and preparing for koinonia especially for miracle service you can be in the living room and you will not hear me sometimes when i'm alone just like that i can be walking around for a long time just walking around next thing i carry a paper i'm writing god is speaking to me i'm walking sometimes god is opening my eyes and i'm seeing the things that he's going to be doing i'm writing and god is revealing things See, let me tell you something i'm not saying it's in the bible but it's something that has helped my prayer life try praying in the night minimize light many times when you pray in the night you need darkness to see light it's a mystery that only prayerful people understand help that person running out here I have prayed most effective in an atmosphere where my eyes can see very few things you hear God the distractions are minimal you are not looking and checking and then seeing your phone beep and say ah maybe it's the alert that has come these things are distracting God is speaking destiny things to you 
you need your attention i love praying in the night off the lights you may just have red lights here flashing green light it's enough for your eyes to see use your your phone that's why you know some of us who just gave our lives to christ now thank god for you but you see we had a privilege of praying well because many times we prayed outside and we prayed in the night when god gives you money and you build a good house build a beautiful garden so not for visitors for meeting with god go back to the garden of eden build a beautiful place and you are praying you are praying fellowship son you have done well it's time to move to the next level do it this way do it this way change this change that yes lord you are praying sometimes it is god that introduces your petitions not you okay you were talking to me about the issue of finance for the ministry um let me tell you what you will do i am going to inspire you and a book is going to come the name of the book is maybe whatever it is and as you write this book my hand will come upon it and it will go to the ends of the earth yes lord you have received the blueprint you will write a book that does not make sense and it will bring results that don't make sense because you discuss with god in the secret place look at how god came to abraham study god's study abraham's prayer life it was full of fellowship And then there are times that you carry a burden and you go to god sincerely lord we need to talk there are things we need to talk about see let me tell you this do not be afraid to come to god with your needs do not feel less spiritual the truth is that god wants your joy to be full bring the school fees issue bring the your brother issue bring the salvation issue bring it before him Lord, why am I still going back to my village in my dreams? I thought I was free. Come before him. He's your father. This attack that I thought left me, this thing that I thought I'd, breaking, I'd broken free from one year, two years ago, why is it coming back to my life? You can come to God in prayer. Lord, why is it that when I'm blessed, I'm only blessed for three weeks, one week, I go back to look like my past. Something is wrong. You can pray. You can go to the God who answers prayers. And then there are times, my brothers and my sisters, where you obtain grace from God, but you need to stand. Can I tell you this? Most of the victory of a believer, listen carefully, will come through dimension one and dimension three. When you do one and three effectively, you will have little of petitions to bring spare me two three minutes we'll wrap up with rules of engagement i will show you some of the do's and don'ts in prayers decrees are powerful my day i speak to you I command my morning, I command my afternoon, I command my evening, hear the word of the Lord. Line up according to God's word. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. It's not the devil that made it. If God made my day, let it look good. Because anything God makes, it is good. This is how you pray. Everything God made, it is good. I remove accidents from my day. I remove trouble from my day. I decree and declare. It is well with me. I decree and declare, favor comes to me. You get into your shop, you don't sit down and start calling and say, I'm now here. No. You lock your door. I decree and declare, even if it's in two minutes, I declare that favor comes today by the power of the Holy Spirit. My products are a delight to many. They are coming by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. 
recently God introduced a very great friend to my life wonderful man extremely wealthy man very very extremely wealthy um, I'll not mention the name but then we're having a meeting with the man and then he spoke to me and he said apostle let me tell you before my workers start seven he's a billionaire 7 a.m. in the morning we all pray we have fasting sessions and we pray we declare to God that we have no wisdom on our own I say are you not blessed now away with that nonsense that when you pray your business you you involve God uh, you are not being social go to Dubai go to the Gulf nations and see how these people take their idols and take it. they teach it as part of the ways to succeed they teach you to do your yoga they teach you to do your transcendental meditation they believe that if not for anything it relaxes the mind only believers who are ashamed and afraid of God I'm not saying to go and be praying during office hours that's not what I'm saying but I'm saying that you need to involve God in your life unashamedly listen if you are here and you are in business I'm teaching you this as God grants you grace even if your business partner is an unbeliever you may not just shout and pray but even if it's under your breath Lord this is the day I bless the bread I'm making I bless my shop I bless this I decree and declare and you will see how your day will look like Lord every troublemaker is far from all that I do for the Bible declares that the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous hallelujah praise the lord recently i had i had the story of a, a gentleman this is true a gentleman who was just sitting down and he got an alert of over eight zeros and two days later a prominent institution in this country just called him and they said they are going to come and carry you to the court we are associating you to a fraud case and he said what is all this did you receive so 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 a lot yes sir remain silent until you come there true story a lot came to my destiny do you know what the account the money was to be transferred to i don't know how that happened it eventually found its way to his account most evil you think that is breakthrough that guy is in trouble because of that thing he may not get visas to travel again it is not breakthrough you want to transfer money corrupt money quickly to somebody's account then it's my own account no the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous when i had that thing i prayed for myself because people bless me all the time i prayed for myself lord let nobody carry stolen money in this country so that they will now put on newspaper exposed apostle joshua selman is involved with somebody's money shout no way listen i'm telling you that if you do not decree and you live your life barren you can receive 100 million in your church one year later you are in prison everything that is evil and would destroy you may god keep it far from your life but it will not just happen just by talking listen you are the priest of your destiny you are the prophet of your destiny i will continue speaking over your life but you must learn to speak speak as believers we approach life from the standpoint of victory remember that our decree is to establish hallelujah Let me just give you two rules of engagement i've said it but our time is up number one rules of engagement prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of god and the victory of christ jesus rules of engagement in the prayer ministry number one prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of god and the victory of Christ Jesus prayer must be approached from two standpoints number one the love of God the awareness 
of the love of God, the fatherhood of God, that once I am within the will of God, God is not withholding anything. To me. So it gives me the confidence to approach him. And then number two, the victory. Please, this is important. Listen to me, believers. Whether it is warfare or spiritual decrees and legislature, you are already a, vic a victim if you do not realize that you are standing upon the victory and the liberty of Christ. That is the basis from which we approach prayer. We do not approach prayer to win. We approach prayer to establish realities that have already been wrought in the Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 and when you read from verse 3 that God has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Listen to me. So whether we pray and say, I command that cause to leave, you are not necessarily, listen to me, you are taking advantage of the victory that Christ has wrought and you are now superimposing it upon the rebellion of darkness. Rules of engagement. David already won before he met Goliath, but he still fought. David already won before his covenant already killed Goliath, but he stood before Goliath to establish it. That's why he said, Goliath, I'm, I'm here to bring down your head, give it to the birds. He's finished. Hallelujah. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain, but your sins was not atoned for by casting it out. Jesus came and died. His dying was not negating what he did in prophecy. His dying was giving it expression. So I believe in warfare. I believe in casting out demons. But my approach is from the standpoint of victory. Are we together now? Please take it down. Let me sing one song. We are preparing to, to wrap up. Um, what's that, darling, Jackson? Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. One more time. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Listen to me. Listen, Koinonia. You must approach life like one who has won. You must approach life like life owes you because you are victorious. Now, thanks be to God who always causes us. He's already doing thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. I never approach life to win. I approach life to establish victory. I never cast out devils um, as, as, as the basis of victory. I cast them out because the Bible tells me I already have authority. This is very important. It looks like it's a little issue, but it's a big deal in the realm of the spirit. Listen. You are already blessed. That's why you prosper. You prosper to give evidence to the blessing. Prosperity is manifesting the blessing on you. You are blessed with wisdom. You are blessed with relationships. You are blessed with favor. You are blessed with divine direction. These are true riches. When you engage them and they produce prosperity, it is not when money comes to you that you are blessed. Money comes as a receipt that it is true you are blessed. Are we together? The awareness. You own the universe. You own yeah, everyone on earth. You all, that's my father, the universe. Listen, do you know why I approach prayer this way? I don't approach prayer hoping 
that God will answer me. No, I don't approach. If it is not the will of God, I don't even pray it. If I'm confused, I inquire in prayer. And the spirit of revelation will come and open up scripture and bring the voice of God. I only pray when I'm sure of the will of God. If I am not sure, I pray to know the will of God. Then knowing the will of God, I pray to establish it. Listen, when you know this, your prayer becomes rich. Because every time I catch you praying, you should be doing one or more all of the following. Fellowship or obtaining promises in the spirit or establishing reality whether you are interceding for souls whether you are speaking over territories it comes under spiritual legislation that way you are walking in dominion this is what prayer was designed for we are doing many things today that prayer was not designed for it is the reason why we do not get results your prayer life cannot go down when you see the necessity of prayer you know that without prayer my fellowship will be bankrupt without prayer i cannot obtain promises and without prayer i cannot create a climate of the word of god in my life when do we pray all the time anytime anytime is right for prayer anytime is right for prayer you can be buffing and making decrees my day is blessed in the name of jesus any time may not be conducive for the study of the word because you need the bible you need materials you need time but any time is conducive for prayer i may excuse you for not reading your bible today but i will not excuse you for praying you will need time to settle down and really read and meditate but you don't need any time including when you turn to the other side on your bed you can train your spirit man listen if you are not filled with the holy ghost here with evidence of speaking in tongues it doesn't matter what you believe or don't believe about it there is a dimension of the priesthood of the saints that you may never come into please hear what i tell you this is not some debate it is truth from scripture that there is a dimension of prayer tonight we are going to borrow five minutes from our time and we are going to pray we are going to obtain promises and we are going to make decrees is someone ready to change things in your life please rise up on your feet Listen, the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. If my little children here come and ask me and say, daddy, I want sweet. I will buy them sweet for two reasons. One, I love them. And two, I am able. Now unto him. The him loves you and the him is able to do. The two conditions for making sure your needs reach you have been solved. As far as God's side is concerned, he loves you and he is able. Please listen to me. God loves you and God is able. God loves me and God is able. Therefore, there's no restraint from him giving me the anointing. There's no restraint to lifting me. God loves me and he is able. God loves me and he is able. If I do not obtain, then it means my heart is selfish, dogged in rebellion, and I am praying outside of his will. Can you open your mouth and in the next two minutes, just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. What thing soever ye desire, when you pray, when you pray when you pray koinonia oh 
Alabalakata Bradagada Balaku Sadabalaya. You are praying to the God of the universe, the mighty God. Please pray, Koinonia. You are the universe. You are everyone on earth. You are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Obtained promises. Obtained promises. Obtained promises. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou received it and thou shalt have it. Listen. In the next two minutes, I'd like you to receive things in the spirit. The things that the Bible said. Please don't take casual this opportunity. We're operating under an anointing. I'd like you to declare. Receive by faith. In the name of Jesus. Receive mantles, receive anointings, receive open doors, receive favors, receive bl blessings, receive graces in the name of Jesus, receive ease. That you may receive that your joy may be fulfilled shouts of joy there are shouts of joy joy shouts of joy in my life there are shouts of joy Haruda Shalabarada Balakata Shout of joy He Pratoshela Baba Baba Pray Haritosh Kelebra Karutia Obtain promises Obtain breakthroughs Obtain open doors by faith in prayer hallelujah praise the lord we're wrapping up now please i'd like you to take this remaining two minutes seriously you are going to make decrees you are not talking to god you are talking to your destiny you are talking to your life 
Are you ready to pray? Open your mouth and make decrees. Lift up your heads. Oh, ye gates. Matos kabarantas kamarata. Lift up your heads. I command close doors be open in the name of Jesus. I hold the keys of David and I command the doors open that no man will shut. I decree and declare my path is as a shining light. It shines brighter. It shines brighter unto the perfect day. I decree and declare I shall not die. I live. I choose life. I choose life. I reject death. Not by accident. Not by the soul. God is a with favor like a shield. God is a with favor like a shield. In the name of Jesus, I go from glory to glory. I go from power to power. I go from grace to grace. From anointing to anointing. From wisdom to wisdom. Koinonia is like a shining light that grows brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. The Lord gives the word from this place and great be the company of them that publish it. Bless your children. Bless your wife. Bless your husband. Bless your home. Bless your finances. Bless your spiritual life. We declare over Zaria, we declare over Kaduna, we declare over Nigeria in the name of Jesus, rising from glory to glory. Everything I do prospers in the name of Jesus. No failure in my life. No failure with me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. Please listen to me. Your prayer life must come back alive. I'm telling you this. You are here in this place and you know your prayer life is down. You are doing yourself a disservice. You are doing your destiny a disservice. If you are a man here and you don't pray, you will be a bad priest in your home in destiny. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray. There is nobody under this grace who should not be a man of prayer. Where did you get that one from? Now I've given you a revelation that sponsors your prayer life. Listen, you have an assignment to find conducive places for prayer. Find it. God will help you. Pray. Make decrees speak over things you buy a new phone don't just plug it and start using it in the name of jesus i declare that within the time this phone is with me it will serve me i will not answer evil i will not listen to evil reports learn to pray you buy a new car don't just enter and drive yourself to your grave i decree and declare the hand of the lord is upon this You pay for a new house or you buy a new house. In the name of Jesus, this is the habitation of the Lord. You enter a new shop. I speak peace. A new semester as a student or a new session. I declare, I give this session a name. I call it ease. 
I call it excellence. I call it recovery. Pray as a couple. Pray with your children. Pray as business people. Pray as a man of God. Pray all the time. Pray these dimensions of prayer and watch your life continue to rise. Death will come and look for you. It will turn back. Failure will come and look for you. It will turn back. Everything that does not have the signature of the Christ will come and look for you and go back. Your life only becomes an unending epistle of wonders. See, let me tell you this. I stopped being afraid of my success when I found out it was God and me that were controlling it. If you do not know that it's you and God in partnership controlling your results, you will fear it. These blessings that has come today, will it ever stay? Ah, will it ever stay? Yeshua Hamashiach How dare you ask me whether my tomorrow will be better than my today? Of course. Of course. No man's opinion is involved. God alone and I agree with him that tomorrow will always dwarf today. It's a covenant of growth. That Koinonia's tomorrow will always, God will give us peace by all means. Yeshua Hamashiach. See, listen, honestly. And may God forgive me if this sounds like pride. But you see, I love people. I admire people. I respect and honor people. But I submit to you in the name of the Lord. I have never ever desired in my life to replace myself with someone else. When I found out God's love for me, it's a blessing to be me. It's a privilege to be me. I'm honored to be myself. It's a revelation. God has invested his love in my life and protects it jealously. Like a hen watching her young. Even the egg that has not hatched, she still watches it with the same jealousy. Please let prayer change you. Most people, prayer is not changing them because it's not derived from knowledge if I pray for you rejoice I really bless you because when I pray he hears me it's not a song it's an experience he does not hear me as a man of God he hears me as his son he hears me as his bride he hears me as his servant he must hear one if he does not hear me as his son he will hear me as his fellowship in the place of intercourse as his bride if he does not hear me as his bride he will hear me by reason of my office so if i tell you i pray for you believe that i really prayed for you i have a privilege as his son i have a privilege as his bride and i have a privilege as his servant i have been indoctrinated about the responsibility of god over my life I'm proposing this to you so that it becomes your mindset today. I never consider myself to be a second class person, not anywhere in the earth. And it's not by this vocal, I'm not mm, a settled conviction. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. When God spoke to us and told us the nations will acknowledge what he is doing, I believed him. Many did not believe. But today we see what the hand of the Lord continues to do through our lives and through this ministry. I've shared with you that God spoke to me that I will lose the loins of kings for your sake. He said, kings will entreat your favor. I believed him. Yes, I believed him. Do you know a day will come, it will be a privilege for men to know you. It's not, it's not from a sarcastic standpoint. Please find a way of believing what I'm telling you. I know your past is not allowing you to believe this. I know your present is not me, ugly me, me, uneducated me. Do you know what it means 
for a man to receive the investment of the spirit upon him yes the next time anybody looks at you and makes it look as if you're a failure don't fight him just pray for him the next time someone looks at you you put your hand in your pocket and you come out with an empty pocket it's not enough reason to look down on yourself run away from people who demean you and look down on you they are sincere people but they are not good people this is what he has chosen to make us epistles of wonder there is nothing anybody can do about it see let me tell you this is just a step out of the cave keep watching you will watch episodes in your lifetime of what God can do with men he will make us specimens it doesn't matter what message it doesn't matter what truth. it's nonsense when you find a key a door will always open It's not pride it's the truth a day will come we will stand and as those flags float and you watch the nations crown for an opportunity to touch you and says you belong to this family can I have the privilege you will stand and say my God there are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial even among the stars one different from another in glory my father owns the world it's not some childish talk oh mm -mm. i believe it it is true nobody 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 has the power to intimidate you god will cause you to triumph and get, see don't belittle yourself if god wants to use you tell him yes i'm usable if god wants to lift you say yes god says i will prosper you don't sit down and say god i'm too small god you mean me i will be a man of god's a woman of god's husband a man of god's wife me i will be a bit don't let no devil talk you down we come from cultures that always like to show we are not important based on vain parameters never call cost what god has not called cost peter kill and eat and he said no 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 he said do not call unclean they may call your tribe unclean they may call your results unclean but when god sits upon it it will produce something that will mentor nations a day will come we will mentor kings a day will come we will make the word of god alive again like the days of seth and Adam knew his wife and she bore Seth and men began again to call upon the name of the Lord all hands together let's run Yeshua Hamashiach Kominanakane Yeshua Hamashiach Kominanakane One more time Kominanakane Kominanakane Father, please use koinonia as a specimen to show the nations what you can do with men who are yielded lord use koinonia let it please you O oh god of all flesh to use the men and women in this ministry and connected to this spiritual family as a specimen 
lift people out of nothing oh god and may they become trophies that flaunt your glory around the earth place something upon our lives oh god that will cause us to mentor kings and speak your purposes to nations place something upon our destinies oh god that will cause kings to lose their loins for us grant us the grace for cities the grace for territories the grace for nations that we will speak your word and reveal your glory even to kings lord i pray in the name of jesus cause us to be your workmanship that is recreated in christ jesus even unto good works let our priesthood be seen all across the earth let that kingly dimension be seen all over the earth cause our words to be like the word of god let us speak oh god and by our speech let us shift things in the spirit in the name of jesus i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice life to your prayer life in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare life to your prayer life i shift you to a new level of fellowship in the name of jesus let there be mighty fire upon your life i decree and declare that you will begin to command strange results in prayer change things in prayer rewrite things in prayer keep darkness at bay through prayer command miracles signs and wonders through prayer open gates for greater glory through prayer in the name of jesus christ i pray for you like solomon prayed over jerusalem that every time you pray may the covenant of this ministry back your prayer in the name of jesus christ the integrity that god has vested upon us and upon this work let it also speak while you pray in the mighty name of jesus christ i speak to you tonight command results command strange results results that will dumbfound principalities in the name of jesus christ thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus listen make it a point of duty to pray every day as much as possible pray every day i will advise that at least once at least the laziest person in koinonia should be able to fast at least once every month the laziest person the one who is not serious with his destiny should at least be able to fast once every month fasting should not be strange to you not as a ritual but as a way of opening the gates of faith to rise then shall your light break forth and your health will come speedily as the morning pray often pray as a couple pray get teachings on prayer get worship songs please let your prayer fire go higher and higher koinonia hear me please you belong to a family that prays pray pray like a priest that you are have personal times of retreat everyone here should at least in a quarter of a year in every three or four months I expect you to have at least a day where you should spend time praying just spend time dedicate that day to pray you have some money you can travel and go somewhere to a hotel just lock yourself or beg a friend to give you access to a place just pray be intentional about your spiritual life and no power in hell will bring you down in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Prayer is only for people who have handed their lives to Jesus. The Bible says, if I cherish iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me when I pray. There are people here, please listen everybody. 
there are people here outside the overflows following online who are saying apostle you cannot wrap up this series without giving me an opportunity to make jesus lord of my life our time is fast spent wherever you are in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain